Good evening everyone, we are back once again and hopefully you can hear us okay. Uh, we're back with Rive once more and we're going to go through another uh, car configurator because we went through we went through the Lotus one and it Despite is... Despite the fact that there was almost no actual options. <laughs> yes, there was almost no options on the Lotus, it was brand new, fresh out the door, all of that and considering we spent the better part of two hours messing around on that it is doing incredibly well actually in the days afterwards uh, it did really really well we were about the third or fourth highest video oh no something like that we were somewhere in the like low 20s high teens you, you were sub 10. for lotus emira yes. that was it's just absolutely ridiculous and slowly everybody else came out with their videos and we slipped down off the uh, off the tree but we still made a bit of an impression and as I recall, I mainly mean, because I dropped on piston heads. I was going to say that to did, yeah, that had a lot to do. I with had a, it. I had a convenient thread where I could drop it into piston heads. Uh, yes, but weirdly, even in the last seven days, it is the fourth most popular video on the well, channel. I, which again remains. Maybe, no, maybe nobody else has gone through the configurator in that level of detail. Yeah, it's, it, it remains, this could be your niche. Yeah, it remains somewhat, or somewhat even your niche. Uh, no, <laughs> none of that. <laughs> it remains mildly frustrating that uh, of all of the popular cars on our on our videos, the the kit car is still way down, and actually oh, yeah. the configurator is still doing significantly better than some of our other videos. But not as well as my nine four four. No, the nine four four is still absolutely top tier. So winner of the popular car. What? Well, on There's here. a common factor here, Adrian. <laughs> I mean, do you, do you want to? They don't want me. Do you want to address that now, <laughs> no, or shall I just? Apparently, they want him. I was going to say, yeah. my said it took him a moment. <laughs> what to figure out that it was it was right? Not fair. Yeah. <laughs> the, my hair is it's the hair. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get a haircut at some point. Hair is getting there. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're back and we're going to do, well, I think we're definitely going to keep doing these like one a month or something and just try and drop through. This is actually the well, second so the, one the this month. Yeah, but... the plan had been to yeah. do the GR86 because the other new car that was released, uh, or at least I think it was maybe the first time it was shown rolling um, at, a, at a press event was the GR86, the Toyota GR86, yes. the yeah, replacement yeah. for the GT86 and the BRZ. Um, and unfortunately, if you go to the Toyota website at the moment... Like All you get is a uh, is a keep me updated type thing, and um, they haven't so got their configurator live. Basically, we'll put it up in a minute. Which is frustrating because I wanted to do there that. I wanted to do this one. Yes, I I think this would have been another really good one to do. We can do mm. comparisons between the two. They haven't actually. Do you know what? They really haven't changed the styling that much on it. Really? I look okay. If we ignore that, it's still. I think it's very so. Or maybe okay. the, I'm the, drunk. The, the, no, the silhouette. <laughs> I will give you the silhouette has yeah. not changed. The but there's a lot yeah. of styling views in yeah, there yeah. that are different. Um, it's got the 2.4 liter boxer instead of the 2.0, um, and oh, it's okay. it's going to be a really interesting are car. They, are they going to turbo it? No, <sighs> no, they're not going to turbo it. They don't need to turbo it. It's got 225 or 240 brake, I think, <sighs> well, from a, we, we a 2.4 litre naturally aspirated engine. We right. can go deeper into this one Yeah, exactly. Time, so, because... so at the moment, all it says on here is keep me updated. They haven't released any configurator yet, and it's all just kind of promo shots. Yeah. So that one is going to have to wait, frustratingly, because I know quite a lot about GT86s and BLZ, so we can talk yes. kind of in, in lots of detail like we did about the... Um, the Lotus on that one. Yeah, so in the meantime, we in are going to look stead. around something that I going, yeah. have been lusting after. I mean, really, it, this isn't the Vantage that I actually want. What? I mean, I definitely have one, don't get me wrong. This is a very, very lovely car. However, I am absolutely a sucker for like the 1990 slab fronted oh, yeah, supercharged yeah. 600 V8, which is actually the Virage, not the Vantage, but it's the same platform but they just did it as yeah. they called it the Vantage Virage uh, 600 because it had 600 horsepower and it would get 200 miles an hour despite basically being the front of it brick. being just yes yeah brick. it just very politely asked mm. all of the air in the way to move to one side because the British were coming through <laughs> and and they did do you have a flag <laughs> no it's it, it, it had a flag 
right across the front, nobody else had one, and it just pushed its way up to 200 miles an hour. And frankly, that is glorious. Once upon a time, I actually so saw they, one So you're sale. telling me that they're going backwards, because I can read numbers, yeah. and this will do 195, lower, 503 brake horsepower, lower, lower. but I suspect the 0 to 60 is a little faster. Uh, I, I don't check this. I don't think cars in the 90s were doing 0 to 60 in 3.6. I don't think anything was doing 0 to 60 in 3.6 except motorcycles. Please, ca oh, please hold, caller. <laughs> sure. So, um, here it is in its natural environment on a completely dead flat salt plan somewhere in... <laughs> Oof, that's going to rust. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've got roadster options because it's a great idea to chop the roof off a coupe and just turn it into a roadster. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And then you've got F1 edition, which looks amazing uh, with its wing and uh, many things, but then unfortunately they wrecked it because they chopped the roof off this one as well. Yes. And they offer a convertible F1, which is just the most ridiculous thing. Yeah, we're going to make this car really, really good and evocative of the Formula One experience. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, we're going to make it uh, heavier because we took the roof off and not as stiff. I'm sure it's still a fantastic car mm -hmm. and it is, I guess, kind of the F1 experience because they have no roof, but that's not really the point. Mm. <sighs> so, yes. Right, anyway. I've got I've got some uh, some happy little specs for you here. Sure. So out of the factory, it was six hundred and three horsepower okay. and six hundred and five pounds feet of torque, which, again, for something that weighed, please hold, uh, one point eight. Oh, I think it was more. It surely wasn't two tons. Uh, uh, it it was uh, one point nine nine tons. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> yeah, like. Shifting that, mm, that's a hell of a thing. Uh, 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 I, oh, why will you not tell me? What are you looking for? I'm looking for a 0 60 on this massive spec page, and it's just not giving it to me, which is really annoying. Despite the fact it tells me the um, drag coefficient was 0.38. It doesn't tell me how fast it went. <laughs> the hash brick, 0.385. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh no, there we go. Uh, 3.9 to 60. Well, 3.9 to 100 kilometers. So, you know, call it 3.9 yeah, well, to 62. Whatever. So, yeah. Okay. It's, so it does feel like we've somewhat gone backwards. I mean, it's slippier though, you know? Yeah. It's, it yeah, needs, yeah. needs more brute force. Needs sure. more. I mean, what it really needs is more an extra 100 horsepower, and that would comfortably crack 200. But the plan for today is to run through this, and we are going to. Roll another car, just like we did with the Amira. So, so uh, with the Amira, you ended up with something that was quite coherent, mm. quite nice. To yeah. be honest, like you wouldn't have too much trouble reselling it. No, it had a reasonable collection of options. Yeah, let's see what happens <laughs> to this because yeah. I'm expecting this configurator to be somewhat more configurable. Yes, I'm expecting a lot more options in this, yep. which you know, okay. kind of, kind of goes to to be expected on something that is from a, com a car company that does do absolutely any yes. anything that you want. Like you, If you have enough money, you can throw all of it at them and they will do yeah. all of the things. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of expect this to be a lot more configurable. Sure. And I, I, we're not obviously looking at the money no object, but I want it like this, absolutely so. We'll do what we can. This is just what, uh, Let's say I, would like I was you to... in the market to buy one, and I thought, yeah. yeah, I'll just go through the website and do it yes. like I would a Tesla. I, I would like you to match the paint colour yes. to the colour of my sweetheart's eyes <laughs> on the 15th of August, 1937, when I first ah. saw her in Cheltenham ah. at the festival. That blah, 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 blue, blah. of course, sir. Yes, we of have course. it on the shelf right here. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, whilst you get up onto the first page, I'm just going to say hi to everybody who's joined us on the stream, because we're doing quite well. We've got a plethora of Adrians. Uh, Chris is in. I'm obviously, I managed to typo the second comment. Well done. Thank you, autocorrect. Uh, Vix, Aid Born is in. Aid from Aid's Workshop is in. Hi, everybody there. Uh, Winged One, uh, Nicholas Hollett, which is Nyak's one of our patrons. Uh, why have... Oh, there we go. Uh, Emmy is in. Hello. Uh, who else has Mint. chat? Uh, Mint. Mint is in as well. So, we are going to go through and roll for what type of car we are going to make. Is it right. going to be a coupe, a roadster, the coupe F1, 
or the roads to F1. Yeah, okay, so your, your, your first step is what actual base car are you building yeah. from? I kind of hope you end up with coupe or roadster because yes. I'm guessing there's less options on the I'm, F1 edition. Yeah, I would expect Probably. a lot of the F1 editions to be so just like you want a radio box. No. Yeah. Right. Uh, so yeah, and and the most ridiculous one. Is, so you're going to roll a four, right? Oh god. There is a little part of me that really doesn't want to roll a four because I just I look at it and go. <sighs> I can see why you did it, but it's definitely not my choice. Yeah. So well, I mean, somebody is going to pay money for this thing, but it shouldn't, should we do it, it shouldn't be us. Are we going to do this as every page is a dice or every set of options? So this is a D four, one, two, three, four, or are we going to do this as coupe or roadster, and then F one or not F one? Because then we can D six it, D six it. You can always D six it, D six. Well, yeah, I suppose hey, you can. You're not going to change your probabilities. It's yeah, still one in four. I know. It just feels like a but much I, bigger okay, risk look, to Andrew, go down the If you want, if you want to roll a D six, <laughs> because D fours are nasty and painful and pointy, and if you tread on yes. one, it hurts you a lot. Yes. So you just feel more comfortable I feel, in the D six yeah. space. I feel safer with just, our safety know, engineer here. I I feel safer yeah, with this. this I've, I've also just noticed it's been removed that um, safety reasons. That, that James's head is completely obscured by the pedal box bug. So Marvelous. I'm probably well, given, once once I've rolled this, I'm going to fix that in the software. Well, just, given the amount of hair oh, I've yeah. got at the moment, that's probably no bad. <laughs> right. Okay, that's probably so, why it took uh, Nick uh, Nyax quite so long to realise it wasn't there. No, no, it wasn't there right. So. Right. Okay. So you're going to roll a d6. D6. If it's one, one to three, one to you three, get your coupe. One to three is coupe. If it's four to six, you get you you get saddled yeah. with a road stick. It's a one. It's a coupe. Okay, we're right. in the coupe. So we're doing. We're off the. Right. We're off. Off the board. We're so, all good. Okay, uh, so it's coupe. So coupe. now you've got to decide if it's standard coupe or F one yeah. edition. Standard or F one. Once again, so, one to three. I, yeah, you see, I would say the F one. Mm. It is like a rarer car. I think five, you should six? only. I, sh I think you should only get an F one on a Ooh, five or a six. I don't know. Give I mean, him a pedal box hat and he can pretend he's Chris. I was say, Chris is don't uh, don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> has, it, has it got mitts? <laughs> it's new. It's new. I see. Okay. There we go. Is that is that better? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Good. Um, right. So I'm going to get past this page. Right. Are we? Yeah. Are we say, wait. Are we saying five are or we, six? Well, we're we get, we're going to ask the chat. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we're going to ask chat. I'm not what, wearing uh, what we should do. Should we do a Formula One edition on a five or a six or a four, five, and a six? Is it, is in it the meantime, flat 50 50? Oh, flat 50 50 says, oh, says Mr. Bourne. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can't, I can't. It's fair, it's fair. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I'm gonna have to try and find. Coupe is the wrong it. choice. Well, yeah, talk to the dice, not me. I mean, that's quite a bold statement, I have to say. I mean, yes, okay, you get to hear it, but it's not like you, this car is going to be shy about its noise anyway. It's just roll the window down. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, we can give an update on the on the aircon situation after last week's stream. Oh, yes, yeah, so last week's stream, we said that uh, our good friend here was going to be borrowing the original Oh, card. yeah, I did. The, Actually, we need uh, to talk yeah, about that. So the, the Audi uh, A3... That was our second rowdy. This is R two, um, which was originally bought from James's boss. <laughs> yes, hi Roger. And is still the cheapest car technically that I've ever paid for. The cheap, the actual cheapest car is still the Golf at one hundred and sixty-five pounds for the whole car, which admittedly before conversion, let's not be insane about it. Hmm. However, your old boss Roger was trying to get he was rid of this. Trying to offload it. All we had to do was match WeBuyAnyCar.com. Yeah, and basically. Uh, who, because of the mileage and the condition, yeah, they did. They didn't care much for it, and they wanted something like two hundred quid. It was it was two hundred and change. Yeah, it was two hundred. I think we gave Roger two fifty like, for it. No, we, we gave him two hundred because I put one hundred and fifty in, which is why it makes it technically the cheapest oh, car I've and I, ever. I chucked in the 50 and quid. you put in the fifty quid to keep to your hat in the ring, yeah, yeah, yeah. So to to make it work. But he was trying to get rid of it for quite a long time, and I wasn't looking for a car. Uh, and then we were looking for a car for your lander to learn to drive in, and I went, well, that's that's obviously a stupid idea, and he wanted something like a grand, and then 500. And we thought, well, that's a stupid idea. She'll never be able to get insurance. And then she could, so because then we actually looked into this seriously. Yeah, bizarrely, which is the big rant insura that uh, insurance for learners is cheaper than insurance for people who've just yeah. passed their test. Which is all ridiculous. Anyway, uh, we'll come yeah, back, okay, to, we'll so come back 50, to that later. Yeah, so 50-50. 50-50 so, is the choice. Yeah, okay, so we are... One to three. 
Oof, you're F1. In a, you're in an F1. It's the F1 that edition. That is going to seriously limit your options from here on out. Yeah, I think. Well, but... well, we'll see where we end up at. Okay, start configuration. So your colours, your colour choices, yeah. are green, black, silver, or green, black, silver. Well, <laughs> I told you. Limited, yeah. limited, I'm afraid. Yeah, is that basically gloss on matte almost? So you have oh, satin. Green satin. satin. Yeah. Uh, jet black satin, yeah. Luna white. Oh, sorry, it's white, not silver. Yeah. Aston Martin racing green, jet black, or Luna white. I mean, at least in a way, it's a convenient one to six roll. It is. You know, it's this is a this is a dead simple, just straight up roll. Uh, have you got? Have you got any? Pre have you got any preferences? Uh, okay, spin through them again. Uh, I'll, yeah, just uh, we'll scrub that roll. <laughs> So, satin, satin's nice. Satin green, I must admit, is, is rather nice. Yeah, so sat green satin, I yeah. presume that's kind of matte effect, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. um, same in black, same in yeah. white. Uh, well, flick them up, because the Tulia will update it, surely. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Ooh, white, white, very striking. <sighs> that does make it look a little bit like a Mustang. Maybe that's just my eyes. I don't know. Uh, it does look a lot like the... There's a, an, a white American car that drives around work a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, black rounder. is <laughs> exactly. Hey, if if somebody just if somebody just gives me a coupe, I will not tell them no. Mm. I will not be uh, be upset. Uh, yeah, as as TM says, ninety nine percent of the buyers are probably either going to be sixty five plus, or they're just going to go with I don't care, and they're going to get Aston Martin green anyway, or they're going to yeah. want black, black, black. Uh, so yeah, I like the idea of Aston Martin gr racing green. I must admit, mm. the uh, what is it? It's Luna white is. Um, I, see, I I quite like white, you know. I quite like the white satin over the uh, just the Luna white, like the gloss, the reflective white. Yeah, yeah I think it looks good in the satins. Um, the, I actually um, think it looks better in any of the satins. Uh, no, m black gloss, green satin, white satin. Mm. <laughs> White Knight's point about that one, you've just changed it to black. It looks so much like two from Australia. <laughs> it, you know what? Which, well, the matte black. He's yeah. not wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What you need to do, when so when you buy one, if you get it in, in satin black, you need to break off one of the side fins here. <laughs> and then do and a replace it with, and replace it with red wood. Bit. Yeah. And if you're not going to do that, you need to at least get some vinyl wrap and put vinyl wrap on one one side. Uh, <laughs> roll a two. Two for toothless. Two for toothless. Two for toothless. Sure. Two it's for toothless. Two. <laughs> Excellent. These dice, like, like honestly, they're like there's no ma special <laughs> magnetic <laughs> system under the table. These are not the world's most <sighs> incredible performing dice. So Adrian is just very good at rolling. <laughs> Play more D and D. Oh, damn it. You should have seen when I played D and D how badly it went. Roll me a natural twenty, please. Thirteen. Mm. Unlucky. The thing is, when it right. comes to D twenties, I'm a guard player. So when I'm playing D, rolling D twenties, I'm used to just big cannons. Mm. Big cannons. Yeah. You don't need to roll high. They just they just blow things away. Yep. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. So you're going with uh, toothless. Yes. It is matte black. And it genuinely, oh god, the more I look at it dead on, the more it looks like toothless. All right, well, let's, really, really... let's slap a livery on it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so where are we in for liveries? So your choice to... is yeah. livery uh -huh. or not livery. And unfortunately, it's, because, it's not it's even... because it's matte black, <laughs> because it's matte black. You, you can't see anything. So just, just to show the effect, I'll do it yeah, on the white one. Yeah, drop it back one. to the white one just to see the difference. So your option is... So black stripe. Black stripe. Uh, oh, I need, I need. Come on, give me some other other pictures. Uh, That'll do. Just scrolling through all of these. Yeah, black black stripe or no black stripe, basically. And oh, there's, and there's black a, flashes yeah, down there's the side. Flash, as well. There's a flash down the side. Yeah. Um, Where I? It's got black roof though. It'd be a carbon roof, I'd imagine, probably. So where are I going with? Any other colour that would actually show the the, yeah. the black uh, mm. livery, um, I would be going with no livery personally. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, but so ultimately, this this isn't this isn't going to matter a jot. <laughs> Why no. roll here? No. Well, I don't don't roll. 
Just go with no yeah, livery because... Well, with no livery yeah, because... Yeah, no livery because there is no point right. in having a livery. Grill finish. Mm. Dark or bright? I think bright, personally, just... I think what, it breaks, it breaks some teeth. It, yeah, it breaks it up a little bit. I mean, mm. I'm I'm not a fan mm. of black wheels on cars because inevitably you have a really nice jet black wheel and then you have a jet black tire and you drive it for a day and the jet black gloss goes so you're constantly blacking the side of your tires to make it not look like you put a grey donut around your jet black wheel. Yeah. So like grey wheels, dark grey, gun metal, anything like that will always look fine with Mm -hmm. Whatever colour rubber goes round. So I much, much prefer mm -hmm. silver. And I think the um, I think the silver grill is the winner. But again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is You've got your silver. Ah, got my got my bright. You're doing well. Right, so same question about the wheels, bright or black? Yeah. Uh, I, again, I'd be going bright, so I need a one, two, or a three to roll what I want here. Oh, no, we're going black wheels, apparently. Mm. We're going to stick with the black wheels, which admittedly, in all of these pictures, look really, really nice. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it is very toothless at this point. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is very, very, isn't it? That is that is quite yes, menacing. Yes, Tom, it has in fact updated, and now we can see that you are Tom Mason, not and TM. Yeah, it, it's a good point, but that it do, that does look at like a BMW competition wheel. Yeah. It, it, it's giving me E46 M3 vibes, or uh, not E46 M3, possibly. Um, one second, BMW. E92 Z4M, possibly. BMW competition Do you mean... I'm going to take uh, the hat off yet. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, kind of, so I'm just... Ooh, I can change the environment. Oh really? I can I can take it out of the environment. Ah, you're gonna move it to another environment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Has the front fallen off yet though? That's the no, real question. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, okay, which competi shots. which competitions? Are the E ninety two, E forty six? There is a night view. Would you like to see it at night? Would you like to see your matte black car with black wheels at night? <laughs> sure. Please do. You see, this is the kind of pointless shit in a configurator <laughs> that was missing from the Lotus yes. until we yeah. broke it and made it slightly more interesting. Yes, until the until the Lotus one started to just give out and uncontrollably <laughs> change the colour. I think it was strong. because we've been sat on it for two hours and it was it was just trying to get us to look. We haven't go give away. you and not given you enough options to to think about it this long. Just just order it. Give us the deposit. The, the and, tiny and server. Wait. The tiny server stuck in <laughs> yeah. a shed in Norfolk somewhere had run out of turnips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, uh, right. Okay. What am I doing? Okay. So we've done the wheels. You've got black wheels. Uh, your brakes. Here's an opportunity to mess up your color scheme. Uh, though it does give you an option for your little red flash if you're going for the toothless look. Oh, okay. So, uh, well, we, hang on. Brakes? Did we not have an option on brakes? Sorry, I wasn't this is paying attention. This is brakes. Oh, okay. Right. No, got you. Yeah, okay. So, brake yeah. calipers. Yep. Black? Black, red, or um, lime green. I mean, now, lime all, green... Of these, all of these are going to look pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, because the lime green ones work. You've managed to keep it consistent so far. Well, I've not done anything silly. Yeah, I'm not. So uh, I'm not hundred. You can do anything set. at this point. I was going to say, yeah, this is the this is the WEC lime that Winged One was talking about. I was like, yeah, no, I don't want a whole car in that lime green <laughs> as an accent, maybe, but oof, that that green is definitely something. Um, okay, so again, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's another D six. Three. So we get we have reds. Ah, classic sports red. Yep. And you have your you have your toothless red flash. Yep. It's working nicely. So this far. is this is still pretty toothless. Yep. All things considered, I'm uh, I'm liking it. Maybe we can convince someone at Aston Martin to do a toothless edition and and let us drive it. Hmm. Yeah. Wishful thinking. Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> right. So that was the brake calipers. The brake discs. I'm sure, uh, hang, sorry, one second, I'm sure, Aid, that somebody will order it in that green and Aston will willingly do it for all the right money. Mm, do yeah, the whole them. thing in that WEC green. That's I a think. Tenths, it's a decimal tenths, Yeah, I was going to say that's very decimal tenths. 
shout out if uh, Nick or Spence happen to drop in, or Colin for that matter. Uh, right, so there's right. no price on this, <laughs> but this is this is one. I'm just just looking Oof. at the picture here. If you go from cast irons to carbons, which on a car this big and heavy is probably a very good idea. If a car ever needed carbon brakes, it's probably this thing. Um, so I hate to think how much this is going to cost. This is probably what a 10, 15, 20 grand option I'm on a car like this. I'm actually trying to look and see what it comes up at. Uh, I, I would say, I mean, the size of these damn things, and looking looking at the fact that the calipers change significantly as well. If you look at this, that caliper is probably, I think it might be an eight pot caliper on the front. Quite possible. Which is substantial. But then you go up to the carbons and it gets even bigger. So okay. it, that might be a 10 pot caliper. It's hard to see, you can't really see the, um, yeah, I, yeah. Um, I, uh, I would say that's probably a six. You've got one, two, three, and I don't think I think get there's one. one there. I think there's one to the north of that. Mm. I think no, that's a reflection from the spokes. That's the spokes coming through. That's, you reckon that's a six pot? It's a six pot with a massive well, what's amount that of bracing around the you, front. You reckon that's just a four pot? No, they'll both be sixes. But this one is a six. Yeah, that is significantly bigger. It's yeah, it's just a bigger housing. I mean, that is an insane amount of brake. It's taking up half the bloody wheel. Yeah, pretty much. Um, right. So, you need to 50-50 that. You haven't got a coin here to toss. Six. Oh, we're going carbons. Good. Oof. Well, you, you might stand a chance of... Uh, you might stand a chance of stopping them. But yeah, that is probably 20 grand that you've just dropped on that. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Chris, if you have to ask... <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, love it. Right, okay, glazing. Um, I wow, it's surprisingly like hard to actually find the price of... Um, anything? Of on anything? Aston Martin's of, website? Of yeah, no, they don't want to tell you how much it costs. Yeah. Um, uh, so privacy glass appears to be just a yes-no button. <laughs> and all it does... Okay. It's a little bit hard to spot. Yeah. Watch... Watch very closely this <laughs> section here. Is it really just the rear quarters that dis... The... Boop! Wow. It hasn't got oh. rear seats, has it? Is it four-seater or two-seater? Surely it's a two. I mean, uh, the... No, is... that looks like a four-seater, mm. if I'm honest. You think that's a four-seater? You think they've squeezed a seat in there somewhere? I would have thought that, particularly on this F1 edition, I think they would that have would removed home, it. That would be home to a harness bar. And luggage. Surely. No, there's no harness bar because there's no points. So I'm just, I'm just looking through some of the other pictures, and what I can tell you is that there is no harnesses in this car. This is uh, the. Uh, it also, it also does the rear glass as well with the privacy. Oh yeah, it'll do the yeah. It'll black out as many as it can, I guess. Uh, so actually, yeah, that that shot gives you more of a, a look. Let's see what it says. Um, uh, so you need to roll another odds or evens. Yeah. Uh, six. So that is we're yep. going with yes. On, yes. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So you've privacy glassed your your mm -hmm. advantage. Nobody can see in the back of it. Um, this being the UK, of course, you can't have privacy glass on your side Correct. or windscreen. Indeed. Um, I remember when I when I first went over to Houston and started driving around in Houston a lot, it was quite it's weird. disconcerting, isn't it, it? It was quite weird to see, A, the level of tints that are normal around there. Yeah. And to be fair, okay, this is Houston in Texas, in the far south of it's America. It's very bright. And in, it's very hot and you want to get rid of it. You want to block yeah. a lot okay, of so, it. So, so like the it's, it's, a, it's a region of the world where that level of glazing darkness is quite reasonable. Yeah. But it's really weird when you see it on a windscreen, <laughs> yes. and you can't see into the front <laughs> yes. of the car. And if you can't see yeah. in, as far as I know, the, how are they seeing? Out? Yes, as far as I know, the windscreen ones still are a hundred percent illegal. Oh yeah, you yeah, can't, yeah but you can't do that at all. And they just do it because they because can. Texas, right? Yeah, yeah pretty much. much. Um, yeah, Scott says stop drinking Coke. <laughs> <laughs> It's not Coke. I was going to say, you, you haven't drunk Coke in years. It's yes. all Pepsi. Yeah, it's in all years. Pepsi. 
Adrian, Adrian thinks it's a two plus two. I mean, yeah. Really? I think, as I say, I think it's a two plus two. Yeah. I mean, I suppose the thing is, I look at this and I'm like, how the hell are you supposed to squeeze a human being into there? But this is like nine eleven style seats. Yeah, exactly. You can you can fit an amputated toddler in, and that's about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But also, I'm probably not mentally because you know this more side scene is quite pretty, but it doesn't really help you much with the scale. How long is this car? Because it's probably what five point something meters long, isn't no. it? It's huge. No, this is the baby one. This is only four and change. Really? Yeah, this is under five. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, massive. Uh, Consider. I reckon it's a seating capacity of two. Okay, there we go then. What for the F one or for the Vantage as well? Because I, I, I can't remember. Uh, I know the Roadster is two seater because drop well, yeah, top takes drop up. Top. Sorry, yeah, the drop top takes up space. But it wouldn't surprise me. If Maybe if we two. if we go back and look at the original coupe as as opposed to the F one, yeah, that might Concept have some cars use. with a Z. Yes. Uh, Listed as a two seater. We'll see what auto trade this is. Anyway, I suspect it's going to be two or two right. seater, and actually the DB is. Going with to be the that, you have completed the exterior of your car. Oh, glorious! Uh, to be fair, there you go. Yeah, it's just a parcel shelf inside there. Yep. Okay. Confirmed. Right, okay, so moving to the interior. It's back on colours. Ooh. We have... Ooh, try uh, obsidian, obsidian black. Mm -hmm. Let's just cycle through them on the... Uh, wolf grey. Quite like the grey. I'm... Mm, I'm not sold. Lime green accent. I'm not sold on the green. I think if you'd gone with the green brakes, it could have made sense. It would make sense, but I still wouldn't be sold on it. Same yeah. goes for red, to be honest. Uh, I I prefer the grey over the black, even. Otherwise, it is real... Oh, yeah. So, effectively, all you're doing is changing the colour of that it's headline just, stripe. Yeah, it's just the... So, what colour spice? A spicy red accent is what it's called. Really? <laughs> spicy, spicy red. Spicy red. Spicy red accent. Wow. And we are going with two, which is grey. You get your wish yeah. again. I like it. Mm. Headlining colour. Uh, so. Micro mesh or. Oh, we've got Leah in as well. Hi, Leah. I know Scott Hi. was in, obviously, but I didn't see Leah. Um, Phantom grey or micro mesh? I, it's not really going to make much difference. It doesn't really, does it? It's. Eh. I mean, if it's you look, texture more if you look anything, real close it? at the top of the screen. Really? I. It's. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. Very very subtle. Yeah, you, you can see that. it. Okay, you can see it basically right. here in this bit that's lit through the back screen. But that's about Three, it. Three, which is the first one. <laughs> okay, micro mesh. Yeah. Micro mesh it Fine. is. Uh, and that is it for the interior. <laughs> I told you you shouldn't have gone with the. Uh, you always F1. should have at least sometimes, Scott. Right, so let's just just take a moment to look at what you're actually going to be staring at while you're driving this thing. It's a lot that of dials and circles. That is very busy. It's very busy in the middle. Very, very busy. Center console button. looks like a scatter cannon went off. I mean, apart from anything else, all I can see on the uh, below the Vantage screen, all I can see is just a pair of goggles with eyes staring at me all the time. So, yeah. like, it's like a um, snorkeling mask. If yeah. You see what I mean, with those yeah, two those buttons as the yeah yeah or wally. That, that's yeah. the whole centre of that looks very wally. Uh, do you want to bring a picture up on uh, VT, Yolanda? Uh, we'll just flash some wally up. <laughs> yeah, that's um, yeah. I, the whole, as Chris as um, Chris says, the whole UI is offensive. Mm. It's so so. The steering wheel looks Ooh. like looks too thick. I'm really not sure. It's square. Which I don't like. I can, live, I, can live with with flat, I can live with flat bottom. Flat bottoms. bottom, absolutely. Yes, because it makes your life a lot easier. Yeah. But square, I. Yeah. Okay. There's too many buttons on it. It's it's there's too many buttons. To be fair, the steering wheel buttons I can live with. That's absolutely fine. But the Is centre that... console looks like a lot of buttons. Yeah. It's got the iDrive style um, controller dealy yeah. in the middle. Is that a screen or is that just a little shitty plaque? Where. That where my mouse is hovering on down there, the thing. that'll just be a plaque. That'll just be a badge. Right. So that's yeah, just like just literally a, a stick-on badge that says F1. That's really classy, uh, right? Is Flux on on your laptop? There we go. What? No. Is Flux? Uh, apparently, it's not. It's uh, yeah. There we go. There's Wally. Do you want to check if Nikes are saying things are looking warm? 
What? No, it's just things on your screen are looking warm. Oh, yeah, sorry. We had this problem last yep, time. Yeah, fixing we? it. Sorry. Uh, yes, so... This is my work laptop, yeah. so... Yeah, good spot now. Um, uh, yes, I remember Clarkson's segment on Square oh, Wheels. Yeah, switch it and... Um, That's better. Oh, missed. Oh, no, it's gone back on again. Wow. It's going to pan up really wide for a second. There we go. Yes, uh, I remember that. And also, the uh, Austin Allegro had a rounded square steering wheel mm. and was well, lambasted the for it significantly. The Amira that we looked at last yeah. time has got a, a square wheel as yeah. well. I, I'm not... I, yeah, I'm not... Once yeah. you get down to the like a shirt button, yeah. it stops mattering because yes. like, you can't feed the wheel when it's this big. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter. Like The wheel, on the, the wheel on the Exige was like... Yeah, this that's is. probably somewhat similar to what they expect on that. You're just not going to use it. I mean, at least it's rounded on the edge. Well, you don't still a You don't go around the corner. Edge. You don't really get, go around corners by doing anything as trivial as actually turning the wheel. Yeah. You just apply right foot to the problem. <laughs> yes. You slide your way around yeah. everything. Tap, slide, <laughs> done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, mm. uh, what, what, where are that we is, on? That is quite. I mean, from yeah. the outside, it was really looking good, but. That that is definitely a bit of a step back. Unfortunately, I'm not. Yeah, those I'm not 100% convinced. Office, office they would. They would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely not 100% convinced by. No. I can live with. I can live with all of this. Yeah, the drive is the driver centered bit, but, but from the knee line down, it's too busy. This like, and those those. Oh no! It's a push button gear. It's push button gears. What drive neutral? Park, oh yeah, it is drive neutral drive. Oh dear. How does that work? You use push button to receive. What, that what gear do you want? Push button receive gear. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I'm interesting choices. A... Why would you not just go with an automatic? Though? Well, it is an automatic, but oh, okay. you still need like something park, reverse neutral drive. You still have oh, to okay. have those for different reasons. But yeah, yeah I no. No, 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 no. I yeah, know. we don't like we don't like that. Oh well, I'm right. really not a fan of push. Personalization. Buttons. I mean, Personalization. famous push button gear shifts from from the past. Yes. That hugely popular car, the Edsel. <laughs> now, admittedly, the Edsel had even worse versions of that because you actually had to go through in sequence. So if you were in park, but, you had but, to do park. But, but. To reverse, reverse to neutral, neutral to drive, drive to one, drive to two, drive to three, because uh, there wasn't enough pressure in the system to switch between all of It was absolutely horrendous. Wow. Um, yeah, people didn't like that. No. P people didn't like that. Uh, no, there is flappy paddles. There is flaps. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, they're just... Um, big elongated <laughs> flaps, top and bottom. Phrasing. <laughs> Are we doing that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, it's not a touch screen, now, because it is physical buttons, not a touch screen, which that would be unconscionable. Um, but yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it a touch screen in the Tesla to go into reverse? No. Oh my god, it is. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. 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 Do not want. Yeah. You are. Yeah, you're right. Nyx, I no, just just no. Right, onwards. What Pers else are we going to configure?ate uh, Personalization. Ooh, black chrome or enamel wings, badging, and script. Hmm. Uh, I I gotta say I'd be going with enamel to be honest. Well, okay. It's, so this is this is one or t'other. Yeah. This is have it or not, and this is one or t'other. So you need to do. You need yep. to do me uh, three 50 50 rolls, I guess. Yep, so 50 50 for enamel or black. So odd, odd for enamel, even for black. I, I've got to say, I'd prefer enamel, but. What, we'll you have something Ooh. to stand out? Jack dice. Yeah, I think, to, well, to be fair, the black is going to look at very toothless once again. Uh, nope. Enamel. You get enamels. Yeah. Body coloured diffuser duct, or. I mean, to be fair, it's already uh, black, so. It makes no difference yeah, whatsoever this one, on this, this particular This one actually car. makes absolutely no difference. So after whatsoever. this, we're going to rattle through. We'll do another one in white, and then we can see well, we'll, some of the other options. Yeah, we can so. look at the. We'll look yeah. at the roadster. But we won't roll it. We'll actually just select all of the stuff that you can't see on this one, just to to be okay. right. So this so, that one doesn't matter. So yeah, now body color. Just... We I guess we are having a body colored diffuser, but not that it matters. Okay. Uh, and then silver under bonnet, cross brace, or black. Odd for silver, even for black. Uh, no, one, two, three, four, five. 
five, six is what I've been doing. Oh, okay. So one, two, three. Silver it is. All right. Again, it doesn't well. actually appear to make any difference on the Seems to have made very, yeah, very little difference. Right, onwards, on to... Uh, interior interior personalisation. Interior personalising. The carbon package, the carbon fibre interior package, which in the image makes almost no difference whatsoever, so... Uh, carbon fibre, which brings with it the satin carbon fibre trim inlay and jewellery pack. Yeah, but you're just not showing us a picture of it, so all right, fair enough. Um... Too expensive to have that uh, CGI render done. Six, which is yes. Okay. Bass or premium audio? Oh, ooh, ooh, I mean. So obviously. premium is 10 channel 640 watt, seven speakers, two woofers, and one subwoofer. Nice. Two well, woofers and one subwoofer. Obviously. Oh. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> you would go with that. Uh, or the bass, which no. is a mere four channel, four speakers, and two woofers. Well, is that what you get? Yeah, we're going base. You cheap ass mother. Just yeah, just in time and, to and stop myself demonetizing. Do I, do I need do I need a home link wireless control center to go with your? No, no I do no, not. No, you don't because no. you have no home because you've mortgaged your entire life yes, to, to this buy car. this. Yes, I can. Right, you can, okay. You can live in a car, but you can't race a house. We do need to get that T-shirt made up actually yeah, and get true. it on the store. Very if true. anyone would like to buy. Uh, a T-shirt that says you can live you can live in a car but you can't race a house. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess you can get an RV, but that's not the point I'm making. <laughs> Shout, message us if you're in the patron uh, Discord. Message us on there as well, and and I'll actually get around to doing some more stuff. We should probably promote the merch more because I haven't sold any in a while. I really I do really do need to get you, some. You're kind of on your own there because down. I don't even know what merch you've got. So mugs. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> T-shirts. Oh. It's more uh, hats. You sold a load, but then just you just getting uh, it in. Yeah, we had to get. We have got more stock in now. Good. Uh, the Ford Transit Super Camper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not really a surprise that there are no V10s and it's only AMG V8s in Astons these days, considering the new CEO of Aston Martin is the old CEO of AMG, whom I am extremely <laughs> grateful for. Turning them round and lifting their share price. <laughs> oh right, <laughs> may have got lucky on that one. Uh, sure, <laughs> not that not that that share price is going to buy me one of these. <laughs> um, so your option do. here is Ooh. rotary infotainment dial. Okay. For peasants, or, or the touchpad dial, a haptic touchpad and rotary oh. control. For okay, so it's okay, so it's haptic on top of the touchpad, that not would instead of, to be, which is fine. Yeah. So, so my A6 has actually got a haptic pad in as well, but all it does is give you one, two, three, four, five, six to select like radio presets, and it allows you to draw numbers. So when you're doing the uh, if you're dialing a number, you can draw the number in, and it will dial the number in, which is really convenient if you're in the UK and left-handed. With I'm not left-handed. If I'm on a right-hand ah, drive car, yeah, perfect. I can just scribble away with my right hand, mm -hmm. and if I'm driving along, I can do this, and it will pick up on angles and all the rest of it. But it's still nowhere near as convenient doing this. Because <laughs> you can say the numbers, you yeah. can have it in like your phone book or anything like that. So if you need to dial a number, you can draw it in. But yeah, it, it'd be great if it also did letters. I don't know if it does. Maybe I just have a poverty spec one. Um, I know mine is pre-2015 when they rejigged a load of stuff. So maybe it's in the post-2015 update when it does the maps in the centre display as well. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so are we having a... Poverty, poverty or... Are we having rotary or are we having a touchpad and rotor? We're having a touchpad. That is a five. So first aid kit, yes or no? One to three to no. Oh, yes, we are, which is convenient okay. if we're going to go into the continent. How do they describe that one? Are they, they just say it's located yes. in the luggage compartment? Considering those are compulsory when you're driving through France, I don't understand why you wouldn't want it. I wonder how much they charge for that first aid kit. I really want to see a, a proper option. If, like, any, if anybody in chat can, in the background, find us a proper spec sheet options list that they can tell us where to find it, because I am striking out on an options list here. I, um, I really hope it's got with like, a price. The, the bandage is just a roll of like tartan <laughs> wool. I, <laughs> you know, it's like beautiful yeah. 
Like merino sheep's uh, <coughs> merino it's wool. pack, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bandage, it's, but, and it, but it, it, it is merino to, wool. In in like the um, Aston Martin racing colours. Yes. All the way through. Oh yeah, yeah. The Sorry, finest. It's still not as good as the A2's emergency first aid pack thing that has been shaped to go round the wheel arch. And it includes the. It's a triangle, triangle and everything in yeah. one, yeah, yeah. So the Audi A2 has one that fits in the back, and it's a first aid kit, but it's a weird, like, triangle shape with a bit that sticks out. And the bit that sticks out is your hazard triangle, it's the whole thing in one that just tucks into the corner. Because they were so obsessed with packaging and weight on that car, yes. it's wild. Um, are we having a 360 degree camera system? Four or cameras, front, just rear and both door mirrors to give a complete view of the vehicle's immediate surroundings and works in conjunction with park distance control to aid parking maneuvers. Okay. Is that one of the ones where on the screen it gives you a yeah. virtual It'll picture give, of the car yeah. with all the ground around Probably, it. yeah. So, yes or no, I guess, on that. Can you deselect it or is it just you I will? Think you can, I think you can de-option it. No. no okay, so we're having it, I guess. It's standard. Right, that would appear to be it for personalization. Yeah, Tom's had a look and can't find an option, a proper, like, costed options list. That is a nice <laughs> Does the first aid kit include a defib for when you see the price? <laughs> I sincerely doubt it. Probably should do. Right, now onto the, well, what's the What's the power output of a defib? Uh, it can't be much. Power. It's a lot of volts, but it's not very many. There must be um, a transformer you can just, just rev the car harder. It's it's what, how many brake? Five hundred brake? Yeah, What's yeah. that in kilowatts? I'm sure it will that's do. plenty. I mean, it's a car like this is probably rocking a twenty-four volt system anyway, isn't it? No, there'll be twelves. Really? Yeah. But otherwise, you need two batteries, hmm. two car batteries. Everything's twelve until you hit truck. Well, or electric car. Or electric car, which is 48, but they still have a 12 volt battery but and the electric system is 12 volt. I, again, I don't know as much about these cars. Surely this has got clever regenerative braking or. This has got no uh, electrics no in it. No electrics whatsoever, no. This mm. is just a straight Pure 500. 500 brake. Dinosaur powered. Insert okay. dinosaurs receive noise. Fair enough. And movement, enough. I guess. Anyway, we have far more important things to talk yes. about. Adrian. Are we going to have a four. Well, are we going to have a four piece luggage set? Yes. Or no, and then are we going to have fabric or oh, leather? You, yeah, yeah. Because we have the option for yes, no on this. So, I guess. So, uh, are we going to do large and small? Hold yes. Hold. Sorry, one to two, no, and then fabric. Well, three, four. Okay. Or do you just roll once and you get? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Are we, are we roll, just, a, sorry, yes. roll a single D six. Yes. One two one, is no. One two is one is four piece fabric. Two is four piece leather. Three is seven piece fabric, four is seven piece no, we'll do five it. and six is nothing. Okay. Yeah, well then we just use a D4. Four. four. That is a seven piece leather luggage set. Again, you've probably just added Oof. ten grand to the yes. price of your car. It's, it's, uh, but you are at least well boy. equipped for your trip. Yes. To run away from the, <laughs> the people that are chasing after you for not paying. Which for are this mostly car. yeah, mostly your um, your lenders. Uh, right. Did you mm. actually want the power output of a defibrillator? Sure, why not? Uh, it can be anywhere between 200 and 1,000 volts at 360 joules and 45 amps. And the shock lasts for approximately 8 milliseconds. 45 amps at 1,000 volts, but for 8 milliseconds. I suppose because amps isn't... Yeah, okay, fair so enough. So amps, is, yeah, amps yeah. is, it's a whack, and it's a big whack. So it is both volts and amps, but it's so short duration, that's why it doesn't kill you. So, so if it went on for any longer, it probably so would. So it's forty-five amps at a thousand volts. Yes, but a but per millisecond. So, so give give me give that to me in watts per second, which is forty-five thousand watts per so second. So forty-five kilowatts. Yeah, but for eight milliseconds. Were divided by times times point zero zero. Yeah. Zero eight, uh, I think, or is it point zero zero eight? Uh, oh God, doing maths on camera, this is terrible. Yeah. Three hundred and sixty watts, actual watts. That's delivers. a good couple of light bulbs. It yeah, is, well, you. That is my favourite thing. That like all of the options that it brings up on Google when you say power output for an AED is like this is enough electricity to power a <laughs> one hundred watt bulb for approximately twenty seconds. Yeah, that <laughs> seems reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've um, all seen the Matrix. We know we're all big batteries, so. Yeah. <laughs> you do 
do have to go in mind though with an AED. You are you have to, there has to be a rhythm for you to shock. Ah, so so Tom's yes, Tom's it's a rhythm stabilizer, not a come back from nothing. It's, yeah, it's it's not a restarter like they have in hospitals. Yeah. No price on the med kit, but the ceramic brakes are seventy three hundred pounds. That's cheap. I was expecting ten I mean, grand. Okay, so that's the option price. So that's not the price of the actual components. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. the differential that's, price yes. from the already huge and very well spent ah, med steel brakes. Med kit is one hundred and five pounds. Very nice. Right. So you yes. can be on theme with your injuries. One hundred and five pounds. <laughs> yes. For <that's>... a plus. <laughs> Okay. We, we give you everything so, here, Aid. Light, light physics lessons, a little bit of me uh, medical health, and how to avoid spending huge amounts of money on a car. Yeah. That's right, totally okay. not. So, the <clears throat> summary. So you were, well, no, we've still got more. We've still Ooh, got more. We? Oh, no, sorry, we're on your we've luggage. We've got some styling oh. pieces. Okay, style. What are we going to do with style? Well, again, these are all have or have not. Okay, Tom, find me the price on the appearance pack if you've got it up there. The appearance because... pack appears to include because if it's so, it's it's black ECU pouch. <laughs> what? Why do you ECU pouch engine control unit? Yeah. Yeah. Why would you need a pouch <laughs> for your car's brain? I'm just gonna take your brain out and put it in its nice leather pouch. Carbon to fiber, keep it safe. carbon fiber gloss center caps. Black uh, valve, uh, sorry, valve caps with Aston Martin wings on. A black locking wheel, that's it, which is gonna get chipped. And an ECU pouch. But I don't understand what the ECU pouch is. Oh, uh, no, 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 this is Aston Martin. ECU for them stands for Emotional Control Unit. It's the key. Uh, no, but what's <laughs> this? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Black ECU pouch, black wheel on. Okay, so there's there's five items on screen, and only four described. So I agree that is a little confusing. Um, so the ECU pouch is the one on the bottom. Is yeah. is this one? And I I think yes. I'm right in saying, am I not that yeah. for Aston Martin, it is it means emotional control unit, yeah. which is yes, it is in fact the ECU key pouch. Yeah, all right. I mean. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It is in fact the ECU is the key. Privacy glass is five hundred and twenty quid. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Potentially four items for the and the box to keep them in. I mean, it could be. It could. <laughs> uh, to be fair, it could yeah, actually it well be for well the, be. Um, then, for the, the the wheel nut key. Yeah. Oh, if you want, if you want the key pouch in a presentation box, it's one hundred and fifty-six pounds. <sighs> Wild. And if you want just the leather, it's a hundred pounds. If you want the the carbon fiber under bonnet pack. Mm. Okay. Foiled Aston Martin <laughs> wings badge. Tom has not found a price on the appearance pack, but maybe they've realised no one's stupid enough to buy it. Maybe <laughs> also no, one's no stupid price for the luggage. Yeah, no one's stupid enough to buy it, so that's just going to be a oh, and we can throw that in for you, and it's yeah. an incentive. And they can they can upsell you into that for free. Yeah. I was, was going to say, so on this side, uh, uh, Emmy, the four wheel studs. They are just the locking yes, wheel studs. Yes, it's just the locking ones. So there are only four. In there, and the rest are plain, mm -hmm. plain old standard, boring locking wheel nuts, which are presumably silver and hence terrible. How mm. how dare you? Uh, which is the other option if they make one of them silver, and they right. put that on there, and then they go, ah, oh, but, but you'll obviously want to upgrade to the appearance pack. So, are we going to upgrade our locking wheel nuts? Oh yeah, yeah. Important decisions. Is this one, two, one, or three, three for now? Yes, yeah. we are. We, we are, are going we are paying to... that money, and we're getting the fancy Ponzi key pouch as well. Oh, changing the brace from silver to black is three hundred and five quid. <sighs> um, wow. Right. Okay. So, pack. so then I've just had a quick look at these. So your basic option, well, obviously you've got nothing, which obviously not really an option at all, mm. uh, because you'd at least, as a minimum, you'd want your carbon fiber engine cover Absolutely. with Aston Martin wings. But then you can go further with the carbon fiber under bonnet pack. Which includes the carbon fiber bonnet, uh, sorry, the carbon fiber engine uh, cover, and a variety of other things. Slam panel, V Two okay, engines, slam enough. panel, so, slam panel, and V are we, are we? Well, this is going to be a one, two, three, four, five. Uh, no, it's going to be a one, it's two, one, two, two for no, three, four, five, three, six. Four, five, six. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's yes, a six. We are going for no, no. 
just just we're just having the carbon fiber engine cover one one two three four five six so we're okay. going we got a six so we're going with just the carbon fiber we're uh, we're thinking just a little bit price conscious on okay. this okay okay protection right. protection do we want oh, all the here we this go. is just going to be yes no yes no yes no tire cushions wow. Uh, just hang on, we'll get to them in a minute. Just like, like come with the option scroll. of having an Aston Martin technician come and like tuck your car in for bed at the night. <laughs> like, you can, there, does, there, there, does there, it come there. with a chocolate on did it? He, did, he, did he ride you hard today? Phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I found a cost for the um, tyre cushions by accident. How oh, the tyre cushions? cushions? Okay, hold How that much thought. No, no, hold that thought. We're going to come yeah, back we'll to them. So, all weather floor mats, yes, no. One, again, one, two, three is no, because I'm just going to start rattling through these. So, okay. one, two, three is no, four, five, six is yes. So, all weather floor mats. Yes, we are. Okay, you can go out in all weathers. Because we care about this. £211. And... Pounds. For what? For the all weather mat. Okay, the right. boot mat. Um, no, we're not going to put any muddy... Well, we're just going to keep our muddy shoes on. You'd never put anything on. muddy in the boot. No, we're just going to keep our muddy shoes on. Okay. The protection pack. Okay, so this is... Which includes the boot mat, interestingly enough. Does it? Yes, it does. Look oh, it's in it, no, it includes a, a boot, boot mat. mat. Sorry. But it's not Sorry. an all-weather boot Sorry. mat. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Get it right. No. No. no we, so we don't care. No boot mat, no indoor car cover, no battery conditioner, no oh. car care kit. Oof. But you can redeem yourself... Because you can get the I can buy battery the back, conditioner. Yes. Okay, battery separately. conditioner? Yes. yes. We do what we just want the Because you're never going to be afford the petrol. You're never going to be able to afford the petrol to drive this anymore. Tire so cushions. So now tire cushions. So they describe these as okay. high density foam cushions branded with the Aston Martin logo designed to help protect your tires we and need... reduce flat spots oh God, I want set... when parked. I want a set of these for the kit car. They're Genuinely. capable of supporting 2.5 tonnes. And tires up to 500 millimeters wide. Hold up. Supplied hot, as a set of four. Hot news coming in from Tom on the options side. Changing the color of the brake calipers was 750. 750 pounds. Oh boy! Rattle can. Rattle wow. can from Halfords. I was going to say that. Halford. 75p. Halfords rattle cans are tenner. Uh, yeah. Okay. A bit more for heat resistance. So, I mean, we we laugh How? we laugh at tire cushions. How much is some Aston Martin branded? How much do you think? I really want to say like a hundred quid, but I know it's going to be horrendous. I reckon it's going to be in the... In Taking the... the mick out of this is what's going to stop us getting one of these to test drive, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> this is the thing that pushes us over the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to say in the two to three hundred pound area. Eight hundred... I should not have taken a swig of, of anything to drink there. Eight hundred pounds. So technically, I 200 guess they're two hundred pounds each. Two hundred pound a pop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're not going to be getting these for Christmas, Adrian. Um, not from Aston Martin, I'm not. And so, so this is for people who buy this incredible driver's car. And then decide that they want to park it for very, yeah. very long periods of time. Aston, to the uh, point where they're worried about no, flat spotting. Max said 400, Aid said 500. Ooh. So close to a containment <laughs> breach. Yeah, it genuinely was. Like, yeah. And I'm in the line of fire, too. Yes. So, yes, um, no. And yes, no. No. For some we have rolls. seen set the dice has seen sense in okay. now. Okay, so Because we, we intend to be driving this, not looking after yeah, it. Yeah, I mean you you have picked up the battery conditioner with the, yes. which is another sign of a garage queen. Wait, wait. But Well I mean you're gonna winter it, that's the oh. how, how much do you think the seven piece leather luggage set is? Oh, oh god. Oh this is gonna be five and five it's, okay, let's let's have it seven piece. We're gonna so we're gonna this move is on gonna to be I would believe that this could be anything up to seven grand. We're going to move on to the car covers and start looking through that. Meanwhile, in chat, put your guesses in for how much you think it's going to be. The seven, the piece, seven piece leather, leather yeah. Aston Martin brand, sorry, Vantage branded yeah. luggage set. Though I note that they didn't actually say who produced them. Yes. So it's it's not that it's like an Armani yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not even a brand This name. is just Aston it's branded. Just Aston, branded. Aston, Aston Commission, etc, etc. I'm going to say ten grand. You said seven. I'm, I'm going to go with seven. I'm going to go a grand okay. a piece. Are we? Do, are we doing prices right rules here? Nearest so without going nearest over. Nearest without going over. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so, so we've got high pay six point five nine, four point five. Um, Tom, you need to go again. Somebody else has already got six point five. 
Yeah, Yolanda, um, uh, just keep got a, two a points. Note. Um, yeah, yeah, AIDS workshop eight, needs to go eight, again. Pick another one, so. And you're not allowed to nice. go four point four nine nine nine. Yes, yeah, we're rounding to hundreds here. Um, Their website is really weird. Okay. It only shows you the price for a split second and then it hides it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, so, so I wonder I if that's deliberate. It's the brief heart attack you're allowed. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so car um, cover options. Are we going in? Uh, so we can go indoor in black, navy, or grey. Um, we can go personalised yeah. with some options, or we can do outdoor. So are we going indoor or out outdoor, first of all? Hang I mean, on, personally, me I would quick... take an outdoor because I don't see the point in an indoor car cover. Just, just drive it to blow the dust off already. You've got it protected from the elements. Choice of so. any two colours. Any colour and piping choice with embroidered initials. Oof. Uh, up to any single or dual colour with piping choice, embroidered initials and centre bonnet logo. Very swank. Yeah. Uh, okay, so indoor or outdoor. One, two, three, four, five, six. As I just throw the door. Four, five, six. Outdoor. Correct answer in my opinion. So you're going to leave this outside? Yeah. Well, I, I'm got, my garage is full of tools. Yeah. Let's be real here. I might own this, but it doesn't mean I'm not building something stupid as well. I need something for while the stupid idea is broken yeah, or unfinished. Sure. So, but personalised, yes or no? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, we are. So, personalising it, A, B, C, or D. We have selected option D. D. Oh, this is going to be you've expensive. Gone, you've gone full on. So, Any single, single or dual, dual colour. Piping, embroidered initials, which would obviously be PD for pedal box. Yes. Uh, and a centre bonnet logo. Oh, I like it. Okay. I think it's. I think it's a bit much. The carbon fibre engine cover is two grand. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yes, as Aid says, a carbon fibre. Uh, sorry, an indoor cover is is a bit of a garage queen one. Outdoor is practical. Yes. Indoor is pointless. Yes. Um, so, bets are in. How much? How much is for the them? seven piece leather luggage set? Aid's workshop is closest. With his second... With 4.6. Really? 4.6. Wow. That's, wow. That almost feels so how like much? a bargain. £4,674. Wow. Congratulations to Aid's Workshop, who definitely takes the old... Uh, uh, do they win a small prize? Um, I, the best thing I can offer you is a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be fair, we could potentially... We should have some, like, random quiz stuff. We, just, oh. we should do a pedal box quiz, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And I'd then... Like to get um, three-phase. Do that for some merch. Yes. yes. Yes, we should. We should get we should get Martin to run it. Right. So, do you want a touring pack? Uh, ooh, I mean, you should absolutely... The attractive option for an Aston Martin branded high-vis. Oh. So, that you, so that when you break down on the side Is of the road, that, you can continue to feel yes. just slightly better than everybody else. Yeah, so yes, Nyax, that is in fact an Aston branded high vis, which to be fair, I could get literally anywhere for six pounds because I could go to our printers with the high vis that I bought, I already own yeah. and get the logo put on. But are we going to have one, yes or no? We are. We are, okay, we are so absolutely expecting to drive this you're gonna so hard on the track that, we that break it breaks it. down. Okay, and yeah. then you will have your triangle. My LED torch. Yeah, an LED torch. Beautiful. Uh, uh, an obsidian and black That's leather it. embossed driving document wallet. Do you know what? I quite like the idea of an LED torch that just drops in the charging port. I ha that's it does look very swift. Again, I think you can get one of those for about three ninety nine from the. More than the likely, yeah, yeah. More than likely, if uh, Yolanda, if you can just have a look and see if there are any twelve volt uh, LED socket fitment chargers, not on a lead, but proper like drop in. Aids, Aids Workshop wants a mug, not a sticker. Ah, done. <laughs> it will be in the post because I'm sure I have your address still from somewhere. So for a DBX, yeah. they sell a DBX specific dog bed that goes in the boot. Obviously. Of course. Well, why wouldn't you? Or why we are would, Aston sorry, Martin, why we are Aston Martin one? branded dog. Yes, <laughs> yes, we are Aston no, Martin okay. branded dog. So, so this is the amazing it thing. It woofs, <laughs> but depending on how aggressively it woofs, it's Woof. louder or not. <laughs> it opens the valves. Of the DBX is like a, a, a deep tan. Yes. Yes. And they've chosen, it's either a Rhodesian Ridgeback or a Hungarian Vizsla, which has exactly the same colour and it's, it's a dark so the, tan so that it coordinates 
Yeah. Right. With the and so that the fur doesn't show. Yes. Yeah. So, so the non F, we have got just a huge number of options as you expected. Mm. The, the non F1, you can get carbon fiber door handles. Thirteen hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. Carbon fiber tread plates, two thousand pounds. Presumably, the F one has got all of this stuff on the base model. In like the carbon pack or something. Okay. So, so you, you you picked up the touring pack, didn't uh, you? Yes, we did pick up the touring pack. So we're now onto wheel accessories. Uh, winter wheels and snow chains are your choices here. <laughs> now it's a bold uh, person. I have to say, snow chains. Uh, if your name, if your surname is not Bond. <laughs> <laughs> then you probably shouldn't be taking your, your Aston Martin out on snow. Um, that is a set of oh Sotter's Sotter you know, Zero. Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Not, uh, the bulk of people in chat will understand this, and one in particular has previous, with a man named Bond sliding a car out of control. Mm. Yeah, no snow was involved there. It was no just snow a rogue, was involved. It was a rogue sheep, wasn't it? Uh, it was a corner. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yes. It was a, a corner mm. and, and running out of skill, mm. uh, and that led to uh, Aidborn's uh, first the original GTO, the GTO original Dorn. GTO that he had with uh, Greg Bond. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's no relation. <laughs> Throw up in chat. Oh, oh yes. Uh, <laughs> sliding that out into a tree somewhere. Yeah. So Tom, oh, yeah. Tom's just said it would be cheaper to hire a taxi for your dog and ask him to follow. You. <laughs> it really would. But what sort of taxi would it have to be to be able to keep up? You're back to that RS6, aren't you? Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> so, okay. snow chains, yes or no? Yes, we're yes. brave. We are going skiing in this. Winter t winter tyres. Where is my ski rack? Yes. Winter. Yeah, I was going to say, snow chains on summer tyres okay, would have been so, a comedy option Oh, there's, there. there's some interesting stuff. So it's Pirelli Winter Sotter Zero 2s. Yeah. On a, a specific on a Y spoke yeah. twenty inch duotone gloss black graphite wheel. Yeah. Wow. Down to seventy degrees below zero. No. I mean that's very no, impressive. No. That's when temperatures drop below seven degrees. Oh, C. sorry, seven zero. Okay, I'm just yeah weird angle. Yeah, not but minus seven, not minus I'm seventy. Very impressed. Minus seventy. That's yes, a you hell can, of a tire. You can drive this to the Antarctic. No, um, it, it's interesting though because that implies that the regular tyres only work from seven degrees and up. Mm. So they're saying that if the temperature is below seven degrees, your summer tyres are not at their best. That's, I think maybe it's just so that how they, much of the year. That's probably right, but on the flip side, it's also probably inadvisable. I mean, you're talking about peak performance mm. below seven degrees. You know, they'll yeah. work. Yeah, but should you? Yeah. Obviously, okay. yes. But it's, it's, I, I still would have preferred interesting our, choices. Our, our particular set here to have snow chains on summer tyres. Right. But uh, did you select both of those? Uh, I think I did. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't see no radio buttons. Right, there we go. There radio we buttons go. clicked. So, okay, so you're up to your summary. It looks good from the outside, less so from the inside. I very much like the outside. The red calipers were... We shall dub this one toothless. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Uh, I need to. You need to grab some screenshots of this so that I can throw it into things. Um, Found the cost for the touring pack. Yes. Uh, Two hundred and eighty-five pounds. Not bad. No. How much are the snow wheels and snow chains? I mean, yeah. I'll swing this off for paint. Put this back on main screen. Okay. Okay, you got so the there screenshot, you go. yeah. Yeah. Cool. So um, yes. So this is. Uh, is this going to be a, a rundown of what we've made? Yep. Uh, oh, I presume you'd like the five-year service plan? Oh, obviously. <laughs> so what does that actually include? This absolutely isn't. Uh, genuine parts, 12 months warranty, best service, free checks, software, mechanical updates, of course included. Uh, and and mm. Okay. This isn't going to give us a price, is it? Because uh, that's, that's... It's a, really not. No. It's, yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, so you basically selected almost everything. Yeah. Just a few things here and there. Yeah. And the standard features. Water air charge. Four litre covers. twin turbo V8. Yeah. From, uh, from, like, oh, I didn't see the part where I could I could um, select it to be mid-mid-mounted, though. <laughs> it only allowed me front-mid, which... Yeah. Mm, I wanted mid-mid-mounted uh, and front-wheel drive. You probably should have a DBS, then, And front-wheel drive. Oh, well, that... Yeah. Oh, that's... Uh, oh, well... 535 PS, 528 BHP. Brake. 
Mag, yeah. So it's on 21 inch. 255 35 21s at the front and 295 30 21s at the back. That's big. That's pretty big. That's Yeah, that is pretty big. Eight speed auto. It's a carbon fiber prop shaft as well. Yeah. Uh, with an alley talk tube. Well, remember that you're probably picking up the F1 special bits. Oh, here. yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a fair point. So we have DSC, ABS, EBD, EBA, TC, HPA, PTC, DTB. Wow, that's a lot of TLAs. Yeah. Hydraulic bit. Positive torque control. So that's the ability to talk. That's torque vectoring, isn't yeah. it? As it's more commonly called. Yeah. Oh, no, because then dynamic torque vectoring follows after. So... I have no idea what positive torque control is. <laughs> As Tom is says, it? it's about 170 grand. Do they take Bitcoin? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what positive torque control is. This thing is two-wheel drive, right? Yes. It's, it's rear-wheel drive. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so that's, so that's what we've spec'd up. Now, should we have a quick flick through and have a look at a white one and put some of the options that didn't oh, show wanna, up on just very look quickly? Just let's, space. Let's, just, let's just run through a Vantage... Well, let's, go, let's do it on the road yeah. here, just to look at something different. Yeah, so we'll do a quick Vantage. So you've got some colours. Oh, to be fair, that's going to give us so many more options, so let's not do that. Maybe well, let's one day in the future revisit it and go back and do a roadster. But for now, jump yeah. back on and do the... Oh my god, that's ju that's just the blacks yes. and greys. Yeah. Uh -huh. You see what I mean? But <laughs> have we got it? Yes. There we go. Uh, you, uh, you wanted some WEC oh, green. Oh, you could have there. Kermit green. Just for the most offensive colour. Ooh, that it's is actually a, called Kermit Green as that well. That is a full-on Need for Speed Underground yes. colour. I'm yeah. sorry, but it is. Yeah, yeah. winged one, there's your uh, your WEC. So WEC. This is this is the this is the line. That is oh. that is really quite just throw me a blue, would you? Just to make just you to, feel better. Just to clean your eyes. Yeah, that one. That's yeah. the blue. That. That's the colour That's, I'd like mm -hmm. the T bird to be. I know it's not, it's the not far off. Yeah. Seychelles blue. That sounds very nice. Okay, right. Jump back on because we're going to get through some of this. We have managed to make it all the way through a configurator in just over an hour. In fact, probably about an hour because we uh, had a bit of misc chat at the start. So, yeah. midlife crisis orange. <laughs> um, yeah, so jump back onto the F1. Sorry, I'm just looking at midlife crisis orange. No, no, left, 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 left. There you go. Cosmos orange. Yeah. There's midlife crisis orange. Mm. There's I'm still cool. Th there's still quite a hit. horrible yellow. Not a fan. Right. We'll mm. save all of these for for when we do this another time in some, wow. yeah. some oh, months no, there's, down there's the line. Because there's so many yeah. maximum things. I found you a jump um, back on the F1. LED. Oh uh, what? The LED torch. Yep. How much is a generic LED torch that just sits and plugs constantly tenor. in? A tenner. I need one of those. Or it's 43 quid if you want the Aston Martin one. It does Even have that's Aston not Martin bad. branding on it. <laughs> I would expect so. Uh, yeah, let's jump through in white. Oh, you want to look at it in white. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, the gloss white? White gloss, yeah. liveries. So I mean, this is the, your only major so, choices is going to be just the difference of the liveries. Oh, yeah, but just look around them so you can see them a bit better. Yeah. And then the uh, there is a couple other bits and pieces. So obviously the grill was one, either way. Got a nice top-down shot of it from the rear. There was one picture of it. Oh, there we go. So stick on that one. And then put liveries on. Yeah, it's nice. I, mean, it's, I still wouldn't have it, but it's, you know... It, yeah, no, so, it's better without it. Yeah. Grill your finish. grill... You, Probably want black. I'd probably go black on that one. Yeah. Wheels. Still, I, you've only got two choices. Yeah, I'd still stick with silver. Brakes. Go black, probably, for this. Yeah, black on that. Uh, glazing, glazing doesn't really matter. Jump and then jump awesome. on personalization, I think it was. It wasn't interior, was the other one. Yeah, body color duck diffuser was the, the other one. So it was whether or not you had that on the back. You can just see. I really can't see that. It's literally it's the centre duct. That's it. It's all so it doesn't turn it on and off. Oh. It just gives you the option of yes, no. So if you go back to the previous one uh. to exterior and then onto a rear shot, uh, there you go. So okay, that's so the body colour diffuser. Oh right, okay. So it's either that yes or no. Yeah. Basically, mm. um, I personally wouldn't. I'd have it black. Yeah, I think I so. I wouldn't have the body colour at all. Think. 
So yeah, so for 170 grand, that's what you would get in an Aston Martin Vantage. Uh, I mean, is 170 grand the base price? No, that's for an F1. That's, that's optioned up on the Oh, F1. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's reasonably well optioned. But you do get something that will do nearly 200 mile an hour, let's call it. Um, mm. So yeah. Yeah. It's not where my hundred and seventy grand would go, but no, I must admit, I would be, I'd be spending, I'd be spreading across a number of different things. Well, uh, mm, yeah. Mm, but if you don't necessarily, there's a, there's a whole other episode at some point about the, the whole three car carriage. Yes. Argument, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, which we've had many times oh, before. Oh yes. Um, but I'm just kind of going through. I'm just looking on Auto Trader a little bit. Do you want to pull up or Auto Trader on yours, mm -hmm. and we can see what we can find. Oh, what well, you want to look at? Um... Let's just auto trader our way through some of the other options. Maybe you don't want to spend 170 grand, but you still want an Aston. Well, auto trader or indeed eBay or Piston mm -hmm. Heads. Actually, Piston. Well, Piston Heads has got. What are you after? A DB7 or Piston Heads has got a lot of the nice classics in there. No, no, Vantage. Let's 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 go comparable right. to to what we've been looking at. Keep it on theme. So. For starters, we note that you can get into a Vantage for twenty three and a half grand, which is pretty good. I Admittedly, mean, it's Cap D from a private seller in Dagenham. So it's funny how the location kind of twenty three and a half grand to get yourself into a Cap D forty eight thousand mile Vantage. It's not terrible. Yeah, two seats. It is, however, ULZ compliant, which still makes me chuckle. Yes, that's. Hilarious. Just. I mean, yeah. I have to say, it looks like it's been detailed to within an inch of its life. I mean, you, you'd expect it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, but that's not the current gen one. So, what do we have in the most. It's, it's actually got a manual one. gear stick as well, more to the point. How old uh, is this? That was a 2006. So, I'm wow. going gonna, gonna to jump into the 2018 onwards, which is the, what this one is. Now, um, ooh, 2018 onwards, you're looking at 97 and a half. Oh, no, I found a 96. Okay, no, I'm stupid. I'm looking at this in uh, relevance rather than the lowest. 75. 75 grand is the cheapest entry level. For a 2018. Are you sure that's the same model? Uh, that looks like it could be... 4.8 V8S Vantage. Is it, is it the one at Chichester? Oh, perhaps that is. I think it's the yes. the it's the it's, it's early in the year. You need mm, you need late in twenty eighteen. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, oh yes, there it is. Uh, ninety yeah ninety three and a half, uh, which is a JCT six hundred one down the bottom, uh, from AML mm -hmm. Leeds. So yeah, ninety three and a half grand is the cheapest way into a current gen. Aston Martin Vantage, which is, yeah, because this is, is the 4 litre V8, not the 4.7. Uh, whereas the 4.7 is the previous gen. Right, one. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 4, 436 yeah. PS mm -hmm. versus. Yeah. Ooh. Versus that one does look quite shiny. 10. At 89, uh, yes, The AMR, Aston yeah. Martin Racing V8, I rather like the look of that. Mm. So let's say you haven't got 170 grand and you're, you've actually only got half the deposit for one of those. What <laughs> could you get instead? Well, you could get near enough into an Aston Martin Vantage of exactly, well, not exactly the same because, you know, we were looking at the F1 there. But you could get yourself into an Aston Martin Vantage for, I guess, 94 grand. Mm. Or, as Tom has just point out, pointed out, when the 2018 model came out, they did a deal which was a thousand pounds deposit and a thousand pounds per month lease for three years, so thirty-seven thousand pounds to drive one for three years, and that is why people lease cars these days. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that can afford a thousand pounds a month. Yeah. But they can't afford one hundred and seventy grand. No. No. Or rather, they can't afford to commit to one hundred and seventy. So grand. you see. Just because I can't stop talking about Lotuses, that's going to be one of the interesting things to see. Yeah, what with the Amira, they do. if they do good lease deals, yeah. because Lotus, historically speaking, they've had one good deal, which mm. is a 50 50, where you pay half the price of the car now, half the price of the car in, I think, a year's time or two years' time. Yeah. Other than that, they've had basically really pretty bad lease deals. Right. If they, if they can now use 
the wider industry connections to actually get decent lease deals, mm. the Amira is just going to sell and sell yeah. and sell. I because mean, people will want to lease something new and exciting and blah, blah, blah. Yes. But, and, it, and sure enough, it would be. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. And that, I mean, it's insane. I mean, why do we buy cars? Well, I suppose we, we're we just buying Because we tinker. We're, we're buying at a different point in the market. Yeah, we, yes, we mainly for the most part. With cars. Uh, so yeah, but, so let's let's have a look at the comparison between the AMR. Are and you want to look the at Vantage. the AMR? Yeah. So you you bring up the AMR on there because we've just gone through that. So I've just got the see something different on screen. But um, if you bring up that, I prefer and then the, the blue one. Uh, no, I want to. Is that another AMR? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, 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 Ooh. Uh, uh, all right. Let's check out some. Let's do some top trumps on the new versus old AMR. Hit oh, so pull up the spec. Yeah. Sure. So the AMR 0 to 60. 4.8. Ooh, 3.6 for the new one. I mean, it's got more power. So yeah, I mean, this is only 430 this. brake. 32 Oops. valves. 32 valves. Guessing it's going to yeah, be about yeah. the same. Top speed. 195. 190. Oh. So yeah, and uh, 503, 505 engine. Mm, 430, 361. 361? Yeah. That's a big jump from sort of four, what was it, 430? 430 BHP, 361. 70, so 70 more brake, but 140 pounds feet of torque. Yeah, so oh, there's your, yeah but there's revy. Your, revy, 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 revy. Yes, but very revy. But I mean, there's your second and a bit off 0 to 60. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, oh, yeah, yeah. that's genuinely impressive. You know, you're asking about dimensions and yeah. how long the car was. So the old one was. 4385. This is 4.46 meters long, so it's still under four and a half meters. Now, yeah. as a comparison off the top of my head, uh, A3, A3, because I know it comes up directly in here, that is a foot longer than the Audi A3. It's a, it's still a small it always, car. It, it always surprises me how long cars are. I just can't get my head around it. Yeah. Because I think it's possible for cars to look so different and so much bigger yeah. without actually being that much bigger when you measure it. Yeah. Like finding, at the moment, um, my wife and I have been looking for a small <laughs> car for her. <laughs> so yeah. trying to find something genuinely small, something that's close to four metres long, is hard. There are very few cars that are actually yeah. short. Thanks very much for joining us, Aid. See you next time. Um, but yeah. Okay, uh, so it's shorter than I thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, my chair is in fact squeaking just slightly there, eh? Right? Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I find it what what short cars are. Maybe that'll be the next next month's one is looking for a short car. Well, I mean, like because you, you can do it if you go super super small. I was going to say even if you're going to things like, like finding things under four meters uh, is not impossible. BMW Mini currently comes in at 3.8 to 4 metres long. Depending on spec. But, yeah, yeah, it very much depends on the spec that you're going to go for. Uh, I mean, that yeah. is, let, let me just check that that is the current gen. Yeah, it will be. The, the long ones will be the estate version. Yes, the the clubman is the sorry the countryman is absolutely insane at four point three meters long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just madness. Basically, I just can't quite get my head around the length of the of the the new the, minis. The, the thing that is called mini. Yeah, yeah. At what point do they just admit defeat and call it a macro? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Basically that. Um, yeah, I mean, aside from that, obviously things like the Fiat 500, but then you're going like super mini kind yeah, of size, because yeah, yeah. I know the 500 exactly. is still shorter or, than the... Or like mini. Adrian suggested the um, IQ or the smart car, yeah. Yeah. But like, if you, once, once, you get into, once you get into like what I would call regular super cars, super minis, like yeah. a Golf yeah, or a a golf. something like that, they're all over four metres long. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Polo? Yeah, probably over four metres long. Right, uh, VW... Yeah, and then Polo is 4.05. It's bang on four yeah. meters, basically. Whereas, and then you compare it to older cars. So, some um, Tom's just put into chat the Rover 25. Yeah. Oh, that's Rover 25, 3990. Yes. Yeah. How long's the How long's the SD SD one? 
Uh, is, that five, is that five meters long? Six? Something like four, seven, four, eight from memory. <laughs> but how much of that is out, out beyond the wheels as well? That's the other thing because uh, there's wheelbase and then there's actual length. Yeah, 4.7. 4.7 meters. <coughs> yeah. I mean, the Thunderbird is 5.52, 5 5.3, 5 something like yeah. that. That's 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 moving into land whale territory. Oh yeah, isn't that's it? that's yachting at its yes. finest right there. Um, yeah, like that's mm. genuinely sort of impressive. Mm. I mean, so the weirdest one that caught me off guard uh, in a car park recently was the uh, Vauxhall Corsa, the new one, and just the overall size of this thing. So mm -hmm. the the current Corsa, actually no, um, can you remember what the original Corsa model declaration no. was? No, neither can I. Um, Wiki must have all of these. Opal Corsa, there we go. The original. So uh, that's the well, Nova. I mean, it was yeah, it was the Nova. So the yeah, the Corsa B. So yeah. a Corsa B. Uh, was 3.7 meters long right. and 1.6 meters wide. Right. right. Okay. And that's. I, I think this is one of these problems. So, that... uh, Yolanda, could you bring up a picture of a Corsa B, please? Yes. Um, I think we we just dial into the the size of cars that we that were around when we started driving. Yeah, basically. I think, I think it's one of these things. Yeah. It's like you know, as you grow up, chocolate bars get smaller because. <coughs> you get bigger kind of thing yeah. um and yes cars have just got bigger and bigger and bigger yes. and like the the current vw what's the smallest vw the fop the up the up is the current is 3.6 okay. meters so that's probably about the same size as the original golf uh, which is what two car classes above it smaller sorry bigger i think uh no yeah, I think so the yeah. up is about the same. I, I, let's, we'll, let's use. Yeah, let's we'll use, check that afterwards. So let's use second. the VW models. Yolanda, bring up the Corsa B. I'm trying to find a decent picture. Just the yeah. one off. Anything off Wiki will do. Well, it's just a page of um, what's it called things at the moment. Mm. Uh, and then if you bring up a picture of the Corsa F, we can flip on. So that's the, so that's the Corsa B, uh, which everybody knows was 3.6 long and 1.6 wide. Sorry, was it 3.6 long? Come on, of course it'd be. No, 3.7 long. And uh, 1.6 wide. The new one, mm -hmm. the Corsa F, which is on Rive screen now. This kind of thing. Yep. Is... 4.05 long. Right, so it's grown by 4.06 long and 1.76 wide. Wow. It's massive. Yeah, so. It's grown I, by over a foot in width. Yeah, so no, let's. Sorry, can't have grown a foot in width. That's insane. Let's, let's do it with dice. So you've got, because it's clearest with, with like the VW family because you've got sorry hang on sorry uh, it's grown six inches in width overall but yes sorry yeah. so you got the golf which was the yeah. the like the kind of full-size yeah. hatchback i mm -hmm. guess wasn't so it? For, for euro full-size hatchback so you had the golf so the then mark below one, the golf you had the polo so the mark one golf was 3.7 meters long 3.7 the original meters mark long one. yeah right then you had the polo under that which was uh, the no, so the the Mark One Golf came out turned into the Mark Two, right? Because the Mark Two had grown, the Polo became this was approximately the size of the old Mark One. Right. Okay. So if I just jump back on here into the old Mark Two. Okay. So Mark Two Golf and Polo. Mark Two Golf. And then they was, brought out the Fox so the underneath. Mark two, so the Mark Two Golf was three point nine, actually just under four meters. So the Mark Two was almost. Ten inches longer. Wow, gosh! Was From that the Mark in, II to the Mark Was one. that in the wheelbase or was that in the overhangs? That's overall VW Polo uh, wiki. The Mark One. Uh, There's a lot of chat going on. I think we've started something here. <laughs> yeah, uh, you catch up on that a sec while I find out this. People talking about the Twizy. 
<laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Small cars. Um, the old Merc A series. That was that was a, that was probably about the same time as the A2, wasn't it? Uh, there yes, was a, it was. There was a point when the Germans just decided that they were going to be really clever about building cars for a little bit. Yeah. To made, be fair, they made weird things. That so were... I, just, I just watched one of the videos on the A2 from Big Car, and mm. a lot of what they did was basically compact the safety rating of an A of uh, of an E class as was, or a C class, no, a C class, yeah, into a shorter car with less overhang and higher up, yeah. So they made a twin safety cell kind of affair where they had a good safety cell around the passengers and then a false floor. And in the event of a crash, the engine basically got shoved into the false floor and peeled the two apart, and it had loads more yeah. crumple zone underneath your feet, yeah. where it just kind of opened up the bottom like a tin can and protected the passenger legs, which is really smart, kept yeah. a really good safety rating, but also rolled hmm. <coughs> badly. Yeah. It's like uh, that. yeah, that's no, that's it's not so hot. No, that is the A class. Oh, no. The A, the, a the, the Gen One. Yeah, the Merc A class yeah. was famous for failing the moose test. Yeah. It was there. It ha it came out a couple of weeks after it was launched when one of the Swedish mags tested it and went, "Oh boy, don't buy one if you have moose." And he's like, hmm, "What?" But like yeah. anything big, dear. Any com any country with a decent sized four legged wild animal kicking around, you just didn't want to buy an A class at the time. Yeah. Uh, I hit a no, badger. No, because you hit a badger once. You, you hit it was a mess. Uh, so the Mark One Polo. It's frustratingly difficult to find a length of. Well, as you say, it's probably the same, about the same as the Mark yeah. One Golf. Uh, but then they brought in the Super Mini underneath it, which was the Fox, uh, was the original one. Please hold, caller. Yeah, 3.6. So it was basically, they've always been looking to make a 3.6 metre car. You can pretty much classify the Golf cars... As yeah. the, when when something is three point six meters and gets longer, they will release something that's three point six. Yeah, so there's, there's the a continuous up, progression. They the, just get bigger and bigger and bigger. The up and is three point six. You, the uh, the golf started at three point six. Yeah. The polar replaced it at three point six. Yep. So there's always something about that kind of size, which makes sense because you need something in that kind of bracket. Yeah. And then the next the sort of the first step up from that is to something in the four meter mark. Yeah. Which I guess, the, I mean, that probably slow down now that they've got things so high enough up. What's the smallest VW at the moment? Is it the Up? The Up, yeah. The Up replaced the Fox because the Fox was phenomenally unpopular for its build quality. Right. Okay. Do, uh, do they do something even smaller? Or am I getting confused with the IQ, which is even smaller again? Yeah, the new RS6 is five metres long. I want it. Five metres. Huge. That is another land barge. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, to be fair, my A6 is like four nine. But then I think. the RS6 doesn't actually have to drive around. No, it just pushes everything out. Of it its just way. moves yeah. the planet just, underneath. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a lot easier when you're only moving the Earth, yeah, not obviously. actually moving the car. Yes. Um, A6 anyway, C7 we're getting kind of distracted left. in just we looking, are looking up. Uh, lengths, yes, which is probably yeah. not the most thrilling of you. Four point nine four to four point nine six meters long, basically yeah. for the A6. So it's the cars are big. And big is bad because big is heavy. The stupid Basically. thing is when you look at the, the Thunderbird and you go, it's 5.2 metres long, has virtually no boot, despite the boot being a third of the car, and has yes. only two doors, which are another third of the car. It's, it's stupidly proportioned for how big it is. The A6 at least has a good boot you can use, and four doors and lots of rear leg room. People are still constantly surprised. I'm six foot four. They get in behind me and they find out that they still have leg room and yeah. I can still drive the car without having to have my knees around my ears. It's a big car. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a lot of why Audis put their engines right up in the headlights is so you have a lot of passenger cell um, mm. space, which is really, really good. Yeah, packaging compromises. Yes, pretty much that. Which As Mint says, F1 says, F uh, F1 cars are 5.7 metres long. 5.7 yes. I mean, I know a lot of that is aero package hanging out the front yes. and the back and a very long, stable wheelbase and all the rest yeah. of it. But still, yeah. when you actually look at it and go, it's 5.7 metres long, mm -hmm. they are genuinely ridiculous. So wait, what's the dimensions of the room we're currently sitting in? Would you fit a Formula One car in? No, that's, no, that's no. less. That's no, not even less. remotely. This is... Really? Something in the region. Actually, yeah, Yolanda, if you can just grab the tape measure that's by the door, we can measure this because that's a five meter tape measure. But I'm okay. I'm I, pretty I just, certain. Well, like it, it boggles my mind one, that that's you could. That's one point two meters. 
Because that's yeah. a sheet of eight before. Okay. <coughs> right, so, so a tape measure will now emerge. <laughs> tape, a tape, bearing in mind that this room's actually bigger than this because this is a false wall. <laughs> However, it's a... So from the camera... Uh, well, I mean, the point was going that way. So from right. the camera across to the wall there, to it's the camera lens Significantly is less than five metres. So go to the actual wall behind it. 4.1. 4.1, and I know there's about another... About a foot behind that. Not even that, because we built it around, yeah. the, oh, yeah. okay, around the legs. Yeah. Effectively, so, you couldn't park a Formula One car in this room. Not even remotely, no. It's, this, this room's about 4.2 to 4.3 metres long. So an F1 wow. car, would you'd have to knock that wall through. <laughs> or drive it through there. Can I have, can I have the tape measure? I mean, really, we're, 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 we're now going to play with the tape measure. Realistically, basically. you wouldn't do that. You would knock through the bay window that's behind you, where you're sitting, and you'd drive it in that way. But you still have to extend the house forwards in yeah. order to pr properly yeah, this, protect. This house it. is not big enough for Formula One cars. You you couldn't have a race around here. No, no, that's no, definitely not. But on the subject of fitting people in the back of Audis, having recently had. Small humans. Oh yeah, we we're going to talk. Oh, I was going to. I was going to bitch about artists. Yes. So like that, yeah, yeah. So, so we. So yeah. last time we were live, we were mentioning about how um, Rive was going to be carless because he sold the nine four four. I have indeed sold the nine four four. F's in chat for the nine four four. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. But it has gone to somebody who I think is going to look after it. That's good. I actually heard from them today. Wow. And you, you there's always that slightly worrying moment when you sell a car privately. Um, you sell with no warranty, and obviously it's it's <laughs> buyer. It's always buyer beware. <laughs> Sorry, one sec. I've just seen that. Access. I love the absurdity of this channel, from making a Jag to discussing a small car to figuring out how to fit an F1 car in your set. Yeah, well, yeah obviously you have to knock a wall down. Well, exactly. I'm not, I'm not you know, Sky. I'm not I'm, at Sky any. I used to be at Sky. I'm sure we had for sets that we could, we had rooms we could fit an F1 yeah. car in, but I yeah. couldn't use them. I'm sure, like <laughs> you know, we could borrow one from Mercedes World. They, I'm sure they've got loads lying around. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they won't mind giving you one. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. So it's it's a practical practical quite consideration. No, anyway. So yeah, when you sell a car privately, um, there's various things that you should be very careful about. Uh, you should never misrepresent the car that you are selling. Correct. Everything you state about Selling a car, it should be must honest. be true and accurate yes. to the best of your knowledge. Yes. But as a private seller, yeah, you, you are not expected to have expert knowledge. You are. You're, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be expected to strip an engine. That said, if you have recently stripped an engine, by all means, mention that you recently stripped and rebuilt the engine. Yeah. So if when you found problems, you shouldn't rebuild the engine with the problems and then yeah. sell it as oh, I don't know. that yeah. would be a dick move. Yeah. So. When you're selling, you have to give the buyer the opportunity to look at and inspect the car. Yep. Um, you should probably give them the opportunity to either ride in or drive the car. And at that point, it the, the buyer beware bit comes in that if you've given them the opportunity to do whatever level of inspection they wish... None of those things I did with the Thunderbird. Yeah. Or well, the Mark II Golf, actually, thinking about... Oh, no, no, I did actually go and inspect the car, but I didn't drive it. And then I something, bid on something it. Something, something due diligence... Mm -hmm. A sensible car purchaser. So basically, yeah. it, it, so if if you I have, have a, if you have a person, car, don't be me. Yeah, yeah. If, but if you have a car and you've given the buyer the opportunity to inspect the car, see the car driving or drive the car, yeah. and and effectively satisfy themselves, mm -hmm. there comes a point when you get to the point of sale. Basically, you're saying I present the car as you find it, yeah. and they, the buyer, are accepting the car on those terms. Yes, yeah. and when it comes to they get 10 miles down the road and the car goes bang and yes. they come knocking on your front door and saying, I want my money back, you've sold me a dud. This is a lemon. This is the lemoniest Basically, lemon. if you have not misrepresented the car, if they try, they, all they can do is try and take you through small claims. Yes. Um, and if you, as long as you haven't misrepresented anything. So if your advert says, uh, this car is perfect and flawless and, you know, will never let you down, <laughs> you, would, you would potentially have been viewed as having misrepresented but if you've if you've effectively made best efforts to, to present the car and you know if you say oh yeah it has a bit of rust here and here for example yes. they can't then complain about the rust um so when you when you sell a car um it's a good idea to give a receipt yeah um and to give a receipt that states that that's the conditions of the sale yeah that you you know it's it's condition as represented we need to just minimize the vt Oh. 
Ooh. It's currently got a Corsa on it. Yeah. Um, oh, it's a Corsa. That was when we were talking about yeah, small cars. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, so another thing that you probably didn't do with any of these cars is get a receipt, right? I got receipt. Well, I got a receipt for the Thunderbird, obviously, because I bought it through eBay. Right. I got a receipt for the Golf okay, because, I, again, yep. I bought it through eBay. Yeah. Uh, but every car I've got, I've always got a receipt. Yeah. So when you're selling cars privately, do receipts because it helps everybody out, basically. It's yeah. a good idea. Um, so yeah, I heard from the... If from nothing the, else, it confirms proof of purchase until your V5 arrives. Yes. Even though the V5 says this is not proof of ownership on the front of it, which is absolutely hilarious for yes. what everybody will ask, what the police will ask you, the insurance company and everyone, do you own the car? Yes. Can you prove it? Here's my V5. This is not proof of ownership, written in big <laughs> letters on the front, and they all yeah. go, yes, absolutely, this makes yeah, perfect this, sense. This is proof of ownership, Just, even though it says it isn't. Yes. Wow. Yeah, so um, so I heard from my buyer today, and fortunately it was just asking a question about CG locks. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, CG locks. So some people on the on the, on the the view will I'm know gonna about go, CG I'm going to go to the loo and I'm also going to grab a CG lock. Oh, because good I happen to have one. Is it one of mine? Because uh, I've got three CG locks, and I think you've got two of them. Or have you I paid me for one of them I now? definitely have Because you've got... So CG locks are a tool... Uh, well, sorry, an accessory that you clip onto the seatbelt of the car. It's probably worth Googling, Yolanda. Okay. And putting it on. Yeah, um, except you won't find much because they don't make them anymore. Um, there was a company that had the patent for it and that manufactured them for a short period of time. They were um, commercially non-viable as a product, but they are an incredible product. Um, so, yeah, it's a centre of gravity lock. Um, what it does is it means that the lap portion of the seatbelt can be made completely tight or tightened as much as you want it to and that the, the section of the... Actually, hang on. Conveniently, I've got a seatbelt right here <laughs> because this is no, no ordinary couch. There so, you know, there's one on the screen behind you as well. So, the way a CG lock works is it attaches to the, um, the toggle of the seatbelt which, which plugs into the lock, which I don't actually have, but I do have this bit of it. So conveniently, I realised I, I had, I had, a, I had uh, visual aids. Um, so it clips onto the back of here. Adrian's just found me one. Is this one of the original ones? One of the original ones. Yeah, yeah, okay. So have we got a close-up camera at all? Uh, I can go to top, yeah. So, um... Excuse the focus right for a second. Uh, uh, Okay, here we go. This is really hard to, to do. Anyway. So, where do you want me to be? About here. Yeah, right there. Uh, focus it on that one. I feel like I'm on the shopping channel. <laughs> this beautiful azurite and tanzanite brooch. Why are you not focusing? A delight for your... You say it looks about right, but... Adrian is currently staring at the... Well, it's probably good enough, to be honest. It's probably good enough for right now. I right. don't know why it's not Okay, so it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe the function of a CG lock. So, as I said, this was, this was manufactured by a company for a short period of time. Um, people that have got them tend to hold on to them because they are really, really hard to get hold of these days. Um, so what it does is it clamps onto the back of the. Ugh. God, this thing is. There we go. Right. Okay, I need to spool out my seatbelt here because I have a convenient seatbelt. Um, it clamps onto the back of the the tab of the seatbelt, and um, actually I can probably do it. I'm going to install this. Uh, it's not the fastest process in the world, so bear with as I do this. Um, so there's a set of jaws here with two small bolts uh, that adjust it and it does just clamp onto the back once you release these and it will fit. Wow, like the, 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 the annoying thing is this was such a great product but they just couldn't make it work financially and so they only manufactured them for a very short period of time and they're now really hard to get hold of. And I've buggered that up because I've unscrewed it too far. And I'm going to have to tighten it back 
back up again. This is going to be the most secure couch in the world. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> right, okay, so couch seat belt. God, the ratchets on this thing are knackered. Okay, so we go in at the back. I'm, I'm fitting this live, right? So we clamp on here and we tighten up our bolts. Or screws, set screws. And once this is clamped down on here, the, the metal is going to be effectively attached to the back of the plastic. It's a slightly crude system, but it does work. And I've had these fitted to my cars for the last, at least the last 10 years, I think I've been driving with CG locks. And once you've started driving them with them, it's really, really hard not to. Any car without one feels like it's yes. really weird. I, I actually have one in my daily because yeah. it right. makes life so much easier. Okay, so I've got that secured on the back of there. And Thanks very much, Tom. Sorry, I've only just got back and saw that you were going. Oh, fair enough. Um, so having got that on there, uh, I then take off this. This is just a, a flat metal panel. And if I remove that, you can see that what we have here is a milled metal roller with a kind of a grippy surface to it. And it's on a spring and it's actually a cam roller. So it's a slightly eccentric cam. This is just a lever that allows you to pull it backwards against the spring. And, oh God. You might run out of belt. No, no, I've got enough, but it's just the fucking, the, God damn it, I keep swearing. Ah. Hang on. One sec. Send it all the way back. <clears throat> Excuse us while we just fight with a, ah. there we go. Right, there we go. Okay, look, we've got tons of belt. Right, okay. Right. So, what we do is we lay the belt over the roller and then we replace this cover, move the spring clip down and we have it fitted and in place. So because of the eccentric cam on the roller, this will now move in one direction. But if you try and move it in the opposite direction, the cam will pull it in and it will effectively cinch itself against the belt. Yeah. And the belt is being squeezed between the eccentric cam roller there and this flat metal plate. So friction will mean that that will not at all move back. Yeah. And so what that does, because of the way we've got it configured, it means that I can um, basically plug this in now down at my side and I can pull the belt tight and I can pull the lap portion of the belt completely tight around my waist. What that does is it locks your um, your hips and your pelvis yes. into the and back of the seat. It's really, really good. It's, it's, it, it, it's amazing. Yeah, it is there absolutely is just, amazing. It's, I mean, it's weird like, to say that there's a noticeable difference in how fast something feels when you're sat in the car and you're driving and you're just having to like brace ever so slightly with your knees to stop slight even in a bucket seat even with something with big bolsters on yep. you still feel yourself just bracing ever so slightly and you, you're using your legs to do that yep. and when you have one of the CG locks on clip it in place pull it really nice and tight and you feel completely plant like pushing with your legs just doesn't yeah, because... feel like it's doing anything anymore and you don't feel like you're flopping around it's eye-opening to use one for the first time. I've used them on the Nürburgring for... Uh, several kind of trips. The first... Several trips. Well, I introduced you to them. No, you did not. Oh, did you find them independently? Oh, no, I've, I was told about them a long time before yeah, I okay, met you. Okay, okay, cool. Because I had them uh, when I used to go out to the ring in, like, 2007, 8, 9 as yeah. well. Well, that, I think that so was say... about when they were first released. Yes, it was. They're, 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 like, they're yep. all 10 years old at this point. That's yep. the thing. But this, so, this was it. It was really, really weird how... Because you went, oh, I found this cool thing. I'm like, I am very aware of yeah, this yeah, as well. Yeah. I, okay, so yeah, so it's not you that I introduced them to. It's somebody else yeah. who then also swears by them as well. Yep. And I can't remember who it was. But going around the ring, it's a very bumpy, twisty track for a long time. You don't want to be bracing with your legs for a long mm. time because they get tired. So when you're on the back half of the track... And, and you also, actually, you can just you sit... Can't you can't do you can't heel, toe properly, heel yeah. and toe yeah. if you are using your legs to, to balance yourself. Yeah. So you can so sit and completely unweight your legs mm -hmm. <laughs> from sort of bracing um, and, and really concentrate on, on using them for pedals. And it's so much better. It is the, if you're, 
it's worth, track, it's worth if, seconds. If you track a... your car and you don't want to put full harnesses in, get a CG lock. Yep. If you can. Because they're so much better. They're the they're as close as you can get to a harness without actually going to a full harness. Yeah, I mean so when they were marketing Even a four point them, harness. When they when they were marketing them, they got they, they got some testing done. Mm. And it's it's supposed to be in terms of the effect of a harness yeah. on yeah. lap times, because newsflash, harnesses affect your lap times for exactly the reasons that yeah. you've just described. You can mm -hmm. better control a car and more consistently control a car if your body is not flying around all over the place. Yeah. Even with bucket seats, it will yeah. fly around. On you still Particularly on, on high G bends and things yeah. like that, you move a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the amount you move will depend on the level of padding that you've got internally, but you will move, full stop. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about it. Lock, lockdown has not been kind. Oh. Um, so... Uh, and I, th I'm, I can't swear by this because I'm going by my vague memories, but I think I remember seeing something said that like a CG lock was was worth like sixty percent of the effect of a four point harness. I can believe that, and I would genuinely believe it. The effect is really, really noticeable. Whenever I drive like higher cars, if my car's in being worked on or something yeah. like that, it is so noticeable. Particularly yeah. if you, if you go from a sports car with buckets and a CG lock to a higher car which has got like an armchair no. an armchair <laughs> perched up high it feels like I, I i have exclaimed out loud <laughs> how the hell do people drive like this because it, it feels like you're literally yeah. trying to drive a car while doing this i think the, the difference going from the uh so, something like the Golf, which has buckets, and admittedly it will have four-point harnesses. F going from that to the Thunderbird is going to be terrifying. Mm. Much as I'm not going to be driving the Thunderbird on track so much, just yeah. the huge wallowy nature of that is going to be so yeah. difficult to get used to. Uh, yeah, exactly, as it is. It's going to be like a blancmange. Yeah. Yeah. Just also, Adrian has said worst. that he has two CG locks yeah. in his car bits box. So those are worth probably, they may be worth upwards of £100 each at this point. Oh, yeah. Easily. If you were to eBay them. But I mean, don't yes, sell them to me instead. Yes. Because I've, I've got uh, two at this point. So how many have you got? I have. Because Yolanda's now got one in her car because. If you remember, yes. we were trying to talk about the A2, and this yes. is what got us on to the A3. So, because I've sold the Porsche, the one that was in the Porsche is now in Yolanda's A2. So, yeah. enjoy. So, so, you've got three now. No, I have... no, mine's the A3. Oh, sorry, sorry. the A3. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have three. I have one, one that in the I golf. bought, one that I got off you, yes. that I bought off you way back. Yes. Because you had a, you, you we, we got a small set between us. We, we, I think we found two, we found a supplier that had a couple. Yes. Yeah. And then there's another one that I believe I got from Skep. Because Skep bought He some. did a big order, and I think that was my third one. Right, okay, so you got three. So what cars are they in? A6, daily. Yeah. Uh, one was always in the Golf, which I think is where that one came so out. So that's of. now on this seatbelt. Yes. Yeah. And the other one is in the A3. No, because I got my ones from Rove. Yeah, I've just put one in the A3. Oh, okay. In which case, no, I only have two then. Right, so you have two. So that is, yeah, that's the right. one out of the Golf which came out because harnesses. Right, okay. So this one is effectively floating at the moment. Yeah, so they are currently available on eBay. Are we they? have no affiliate link, but they are also £109. I paid, I, I think I paid £55 yeah. pounds for my first one. So there is um, another what one. Did you, what did you search to bring that up? eBay CG C lock? Just CG space lock. CG space lock. Yeah, and there is. So there's so, one there. Excellent condition. Presumably it might just be the last one that they have. Uh, CG log no longer made, difficult to get hold of, no offers. Uh, not surprised. There's another one which is 109. So, f right. So, the, can you can you just put my screen up on Yolanda? Just since we're talking about these, and some people may be going to look for these. Um, there's two different versions that you will find out there. There was one with yellow text on it, and one with red text on it. The red text ones are the older ones. Uh, yeah, they're, they're the, the original ones. Yes. Um, 
I believe, and I think Ske I remember Skep telling me something about this. There is two version of the red the red ones as well. There's one where the the really? lever on the side is replaceable, and that one says that it comes with spare parts, which is the spare lever on the yeah. right hand side. Um, so that may be the best version. The the yellow text version is later. They're, they're, they're all good. They're, they're all fine. They all work in exactly yeah, yeah. the same way. And they all way. work they in all exactly the same, same way. So do you? Yeah, right. CG lock. So, so they are also very good. So I have, I've got three herniated discs in my lower back, which is a bit of a pain, mm -hmm. frequently, uh, and cripples me from time to time. And I find not having to brace in the car, even as a daily, just being pinned in at my waist means that I don't slouch my back. Yep. And I don't kind of twist it. Uh, it it's just way more comfortable. And I've actually seen it advertised once. <clears throat> as like an orthopedic helper, yeah. so, not an orthopedic winner. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this is the new. So, so the company that that originally did CG Lock. Yeah. Um, they couldn't keep making them because they couldn't make them economically. Yeah. And unfortunately, they've still got the patent, so nobody else can make them. Mm -hmm. um, they came out with this thing called Shoft, which was it's a plastic device, yeah, which so is supposed this, to just yeah. be kind of like friction based. Yeah, it's it's does it it works effectively on the same principle. It tries to lock in it's probably, the lap belt section. It's probably fine it's for no, it, driving around day to day. Yes, but, but it's not going to help you on track. No, not like no. the proper one is the one that, that it'll it'll be enough for. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to go to the shops for like what I use mine for in the A6 day to day. It's probably all right. I don't know. I've not tried it. <laughs> Honestly, find a CG lock. Screw this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Find get, a CG get, lock. Get a CG lock. Way, lock because way, way better. When they were clearing out, preparing for the shaft. Yeah, yeah. They sold five of them in two days. Yeah, I bet. If you, if you, you, I think you will only find them in eBay and secondhand sales at this point. Yeah, the one. But I mean, they're very hard wearing because they're all metal components. Oh, yeah. So there's no problem with with a, having a secondhand. A couple of years ago. Um, we did this. We did this big order, and I think we ended up buying ten. And yeah, we we bought ten well, of them for so a the, group of us because we're like, yeah. So how many have you got? We and discovered went, oh, 15, 16 and I think we bought we bought more than half of yeah. this stock. We discovered that Design Nine Eleven, which is a company mm -hmm. that I was using for parts um, mm -hmm. for the nine four four, they had it, but you had to search. It wasn't listed as a part for sale. You had to search yeah. within their website specifically for CG Lock, and then it would pull up a, a kind of hidden page. Yeah. So they had some of them, and we called them up and we confirmed, yes, we got yes. a box of like, these. Cool. How many? And do they'd you had them for ages because they weren't selling them. Yeah. And so they were offering them at sixty quid, and yeah, yeah I think um, we, bought, we, I, we bought more than half of it. I, I seem <laughs> to recall it being a six or seven hundred quid order that we did. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we we basically we bought them out. Yeah, they don't they don't have any more at this point. I think there are still some left. Yeah, yeah. Because I think so, I was going to get another one, and then I got made redundant. Uh, well, not quite made redundant. My position yeah. my position was, uh, it was moved between departments, and I wasn't. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I don't know how many of them are out there. Like, if you go to a track day, will you see other people with them? Or is it just that, like, I've our community of people know about them? I've seen a few. I haven't actually seen that many on track days. People who I spoke to who were around back in the day, and back in the day, ten years ago, mm. um, there was quite a lot of people had them then that we used to go to the tracks to. So from yeah. the Club GTI yeah. lot, there was quite a few I wonder where they there. all are now, though. Um... But yeah, I mean, a lot of people they just they don't think about it. They just put it in, or they go, "Oh, I can't be bothered with that," because they they don't put it on the daily, so it sits around somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, so I'd be yeah. interested to try the shaft. Just I would be interested it. to try to compare. Yeah, I don't but know I how def much a I would, shaft is. I would, twenty five quid. Yeah, they're like twenty. Two. They're twenty mm. twenty five quid. They they are just a sort of. They're definitely easier to put on than the CG lock. Yes. Having fought with one before. Yeah. But that's yes. like, again, that's also why they they're not probably not as effective because they don't grip as much. So no, if really. you absolutely positively cannot find mm. a CG lock and want something, 
you could get one. Yes. I'm not going to sit here and recommend it because I have never used one. If Shoft would like to send us some to test, <laughs> certainly I sure. will give it a test. I What's the likelihood for... that Shoft is watching this? Nothing. Mm. I can tell you for nothing that it's not going to be as good as the proper CG lock. But if it's comparable, yeah. well, congratulations. Yeah. Like, well done. And do not, do not ever do what Emmy did, which is give it away with the car that you sold. Oh, good God. Why? 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 That would be a mistake. But there we go. Yeah, um, it's, it's the last thing that I... I mean, yeah. I, my previous A6 went into the body shop to have some work done after somebody pranked mm. the back of it. And they managed to... Oh, yeah, they lost... They lost the... They lost the front bar, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they lost the front bar. So have you still out. got everything except the front bar lying around? Because I'm surely you could manufacture something. Probably. I probably could manufacture something to that effect, yes, because it is just rolled but, okay. steel. So the, it is made to within a very tight tolerance, which is what I basically um, I, I messaged them and said, "Look, can I get a spare front cover?" And he went, "Probably not, because they are all they're put together as a pair, and then yeah, yeah. So you fit to be a, you had to buy another one. So I had to buy another one, but by the same token, the body shop also gave me the parts for it. Oh no, no, they lost it somewhere in the car when we stripped the A6. We found it. Ah, good. But I couldn't find it. It went back to the body shop. They couldn't find it in any of the parts. Like it was tucked so deep underneath one of the seat rails or something. I just, yeah, it was gone. It took. It was about eighteen. The only months reason you found it find is because it. you picked the car. Apart it, the only reason we found it is because we literally yeah. stripped the car to its yeah. component parts to sell it. That's yeah. the only way we found it. Um, but yeah, I'm, that might have been that one actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, but there's definitely so, there's the there's the one in my daily. There's that one, maybe maybe the Mark II still has one on, and that is a third because that would explain the third one that I think yeah, that I have. Because I remember the story about is them the, losing. Is the broken, so the, the, the reason one, the reason they do the, sometimes get lost is that MOT testers have a habit MOT of, tester. Yeah, but oh, but no, I, but MOT whenever guys whenever do, my yeah. Subaru comes back from being MOT tested, always been this popular. is always sat in the center console because they yeah. popped it off. Because they're checking the seatbelt yes. function. Yeah. Um, the, unfortunately, they they know what they're doing, so they know <laughs> what a CG lock is. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. But to be fair, most places after they've seen one once, um, mine is normally the first one that they see, and they go, "What's that?" Like, "Oh, it does this." Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Okay. How do I get past it so that I can test it properly? You just you, you pop it off and you put it in a safe place, and then it just flaps around on the belt and you yeah. deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> It's fine. According to their Facebook page, back in 2013, yeah. all car chasers filmed at Pinewood use CG lock. Yeah. Yes, because you can, you, you know, it no didn't. harnesses, but exactly, you can't have a harness, but you need to stick, you need to stick in the car. Yeah. So yeah, it's just it's a no-brainer to oh, do you want to be a little bit more safe in the car? Yes. Cool. Yes. It'll cost you sixty quid. So Done. What, what I what I don't understand is why Volvo haven't bought the pattern. Well, just started. And just started just hemorrhaging them out. Well, why would it not be built into every seatbelt? Um, complexity. The, I mean, I suppose the issue is there are people who would be, there are Americans who would be like, this is uncomfortable. My, no, my freedoms. Just, yeah, my freedoms. You can't make me wear one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's, a... that's why it hasn't appeared as a feature of every car. Yeah. It's it's a little bit more complicated to use than a seatbelt, and. It's, it's, I mean, it's let's let's remember that seatbelts, when they were first introduced, had there had to be a system that like clipped the seatbelt in for you. In America, the the thing that that like transited the seatbelt around yeah. the nowhere else. Like it's mind blowing that somebody had to come up with that. But yeah. it's yeah. still, I'm still amazed that the the automated seatbelt was a thing, and some of it was for convenience, some of it was to make people wear them. It just wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's quite incredible. But there we go. And it's also a really good way to grow I mean, yourself trying to on get the, in. On and the out other hand, I, I can remember on a long trip in the Lotus, which mm. had quite hard seats and yeah. had a CG lock installed. Yes. I drove because I'm in lunatic, I drove the Lotus to Sheffield a couple of times for oh, yeah. when I was going up to yeah. Sheffield for my degree courses. Um, and it's from where I live it's about three and a half, four hour four drive. Four hours, yeah. So I did four hours without a break end to end 
and I couldn't actually get out of the car when that's, I got there because I'd had it a little bit oh, too tight. That's a brave move. And basically, I just I just locked off all circulation into my legs. For all I those, could still move my feet just enough to do the pedals. For all those tight driving corners on the but M1. I did have to kind of crawl Oof. out of the car and just like drag myself across the ground a little bit because I <laughs> killed all the circulation in my legs. Yeah. Uh, so. Just to bring no. us back on topic to the old... Uh, no. Oh no, you were going to no. have your... Yeah, we're we're going to talk about the yes. A2. Oh yes, it's going to be on the A2. We'll this is an opportunity. It's the A3. For God's sake, it's an A3. R2, right. Should we it's pull R2, this off? Because we're not sponsored by them, so screw yeah. it. <laughs> um, can we get a picture of R2? Has R has R2 appeared on... Nope, never. Other than in the background of bits. Okay. It's never formally been on. Uh, right, will... so we, we should... Oh, no, yes, option. he has. Yes, because we did a comparison in one of the episodes on wheelbases. I will find a page. You, 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 you start chatting, I'll yeah, find sure. it, and then so link it to Yolanda, and then... Yeah, we we, we've already explained the story that, that Ra uh, Rowdy 2 came about because Yolanda was looking for a car to learn to drive in. Yeah. Um, and we had the steer from my old boss, Roger, um, that he was looking to potentially get rid of the car that he had been remorselessly hacking to work, back and forth to work in, for several years. He was moving on to an A4 Cabrio. Um, so he had an A3 Quattro 1.8 Turbo to get rid of, basically. And he was just looking to offload it. He tried um, We Buy Any Car. He got a derisory offer. We made him a slightly less derisory offer, and that was enough to secure a black... Full leather, quite highly specced. Um, it's full spec. It's, it's yeah. missing nothing. Yeah, um, a full specced uh, A3 Quattro. So Yolanda, you've had that now for. Well, you learned to drive in it first of all. Yeah, I took my test in it. You took Twice. your test in it, which must have scared the invigilator senseless to see a learner in a two hundred and no one hundred and eighty. 180 brake yeah. horsepower car? 180 brake. 180 brake horsepower I think, car. I think she was more concerned, or at least the first one was, that I didn't check my blind spot. Yeah. She stopped me several times and was like, and take off again. And I kept checking my right one, but I, like, I missed my left one again. And she kept saying, she's like, and pull over here. And pull away from the curve. And I did it wrong every Oh uh, dear. Was that your major? Yeah, yeah, well, I did. Yeah. I it was enough minors that it built so, into a major. Yeah, yeah. So, so the the A3 is um, it's what's the plate? Is it an S plate? It's a or? W plate. W plate. So, what does that make it? Ninety nine. Two thousand. Ninety nine. I thought S was ninety nine for some reason. No, S is ninety seven. Okay, so W would be ninety nine. Right, I'll take you like for it. That, yeah. Um so it's black uh it's black leather interior. It's really quite a nice car. It's got a little bit of rust on it at this point. Yeah, the um, rear arches need a little bit of TLC. It's it's mm. it's missing a few bits and pieces. You know, one of the door handles has fallen off and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's sprung off eventually. Mechanically speaking, it is remarkably robust. Yes, it, that is surprising because I've been in a car with Roger. So I've just. And I don't think you've ever been in a car with Roger, have no. you? No. Yolanda, I've sent you the uh, video to pop up on uh, VT. Yeah. Um, so Roger is uh, quite a good driver, generally. But he's, he's not particularly mechanically sympathetic. <laughs> <shall we laughs> I was going to say, how is his mechanical sympathy? And if the yes. answer is no. Um, <laughs> so the, the particular. Hi, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roger. Um, uh, the particular problem I have is the way that he rides the clutch. Ah. So, uh, it was, uh, what I was really interested when I when I got into you the need car to pause was what it the... as soon as it starts playing. There he is. Yeah, there he is. So this That's is R two. This is episode nineteen uh, of um, Pedalbox when we were building the rolling chassis up and getting it sort of on, and we were comparing wheelbase lengths uh, mm. of the various different cars. So we compared yeah. what we were building against the Mark two, the A three, the SD one, and the Thunderbird. Yeah, and we are. Longer than the Mark II and longer than the A3, but mercifully shorter than the SD1 or the Thunderbird. <laughs> so, which which wheels are those? So, those are S3 wheels. It originally had the five-spoke monoblock that came on. Uh, and they got from the TT. They got shifted to. They shifted to the internet. Oh, okay. <laughs> they were just sold because I'm. Much... They were they were bought. Yeah. For this purpose, because they were 16s, and mm -hmm. I wanted something that was a little bit less flexy in the sidewall. So these are 17s from the S3, which, yeah. admittedly, these were an absolute steal. 
the... So continuing the theme, really. Yeah. The wheels, the wheels and tyres actually cost two-thirds of the car. The Which wheels normally would be a really worrying number, but yeah. in this case, that's the, still very cheap. Yeah, the wheels were a really good condition set that I found on eBay, and they were 80 quid for a full set of four, which was a bargain. And the first tyres that we put on were a set of Part 1 AV08s, which were 40 quid. Yeah. Um, and we rinsed those tyres in one track day down at Landau. Um, and there were little bits... It wasn't breaking through cracking and coming apart, but it was starting to scrub off chunks here and there. Um, yeah. by they the they, had, day, gi they like, had given all they honest, had to give. That has given... Yeah. We still had to drive hours home, so... Are you moving the thing around? The pip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I um, how to do it, and now I'm going for Yeah, now you've got to do it. So you can see can you from this... it a bit bigger? It should be... F what's it currently? Well, this is probably the, the biggest problem with the car, is that there yeah. is... Rust on the wheel arch. In terms of the bodywork, the, the worst part of it is this edge both sides, but mm -hmm. um, that's not insurmountable. Uh, it's not gonna be it's not gonna go away permanently. It's not all the way through, it is just on the surface because they, they they galvanize a lot of the bodies. So we are gonna just go back over it and basically I need to get some black paint and then I can do it. And yeah. I can buff it up and put the lacquer on it, everything nice and proper. It's not going to look spot on, hmm. but it's going to stop it rusting more. And I really yeah. should have done this this point, and I haven't, because this is about three years ago now. Yeah, so that's, yeah. That's kind so of it's, a bit, it's a bit worse. Yeah. But, mechanically speaking, oh, it drives remarkably well. Yeah. It's the clutch The clutch is heavy. It's needed. Which I think is, is legacy of Roger's heavy foot. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's warm. No, we haven't done the clutch on that. Did we never do a clutch on that? No, yeah, we it is amazing that that clutch is still alive. Yeah, it does need doing. It's yeah. on the list. It's 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 heavy and it's a little bit biting. The, cl the, clutch the real is on problem the list. I have with the clutch, which is like, what the hell, Audi? So the cl the clutch is right over on the left hand side of the pedal box. Yeah, got to got to mention pedal box. <laughs> yes, at every opportunity. Um, so the clutch is right over the left on the left hand side of the pedal box. The pedals are actually pretty nicely set up. I, I drove this car for a weekend, I put a couple of hundred miles on it, um, and by the end of that, it, I was quite nicely heel and towing. It's, it's reasonably set up. Yeah. But the clutch pedal, there is a plastic surround, which is approximately like L-shaped. Yeah. And when you depress the clutch pedal fully, the plastic, the, the pedal goes past that, and you find that your foot is now pivoting over the plastic. To, and you effectively have to, to push with your toes to get the pedal all the way to the firewall. It's a bit weird, isn't it? What the hell? Yeah. Why, would you, why would you have halfway down the pedal travel something that just goes, oh, oh, oh just, no, no. I mean, is it that the way the car is supposed to be set up, the pedal shouldn't be going that far? No idea. Or is it just that, like, they decided it'd be really nice if halfway through your foot could have a nice <laughs> massage just experience rest, you know. of, like... Basically ramming into the side of the table like that. Yeah. Like what the hell? Does that not bug the hell out of you when you're driving it? See, I've or is never, it one of those things that I don't, I don't particularly notice it. I learn. I guess because I learned to. Yeah. Drive it. Yeah. You wouldn't. It's yeah. just and and then when I moved to another car, it was just another car, so I never really registered mm. that it was. It yeah. To be fair, uh, Emmy and yeah, she says uh, she had no synchro in first, second, third, and fourth. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I okay. would take a dodgy clutch over that gearbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's week. fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, I mean, the gear action is actually pretty good. The gear it's, action is it's really solid. Nice. It's yeah. solid. And mechanically, like I, I, I treated it quite nicely because it wasn't my car, obviously. Oh, but good. you know, if you if you rev it out, mm -hmm. it it gives. It's it's got a lot to give. Yeah, it goes very very. And the other thing that was the, the the other thing that surprised me about this is that I've driven a lot of turbocharged cars. Mm. Um, of a variety of Japanese natures. Yeah, because you've and had what? Impre to me, Impreza? Impreza, Forrester. Forrester. And, uh, well, two Foresters. Yeah. And a... GT4. Two GT4s. Two GT4s. One of which was standard and one of which was heavily modified. Yeah. Um, so I've driven a lot of turbocharged things, but they've all been very traditional Japanese turbocharged, which is like... Yes, mint. <laughs> which is like nothing. You know, very, 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 very staid. And then it's just like, and here's a big box of everything. Yes. Yes. So this, to me, it feels progressive. remarkably, progressively, yeah. mildly turbocharged. Yeah. Do you know what pressure it's running? No. 
Is, I mean, it, is, it inter- not, is it intercooled? Yep. Single. So it so is intercooled. On... So it is probably running like point, point 0.8? Other side, not point this eight, side. Point it's six. The, it's the, the other side. Uh, I would believe relatively mild right turbo. Probably. I mean, it might be running like one a bar. I don't know. It needs the... Yes. Uh, so, I yeah. the lady at Halford. She opened the and was like, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. And I was like, I know, I know, I just need you to check the air con for me. Mm. Like, I am fully aware of all the things that are wrong in my car, but <laughs> it functions and it gets me to work. Yes. <laughs> okay, a three boost level. Thank you, Club GTI. Because this is the same engine that is in your... Standard is 0.6. 0.6, yeah, okay, so that is mild compared to most Japanese Which turbos. is the KO3, by the same token, so that might be a KO3S because the band was a KO4 from memory, so that might so be that's, the KO3. So that's 180 brake. Yeah, the KO3 the one... is on the AGU, the KO3S is the, one point, is the 180, I think, from memory. And then the KO4 is the BAM 225 brake one. runs 0.6. Uh, the okay, so this thread seems to be suggesting about point eight, give mm-hmm. or take. Um, okay, it will yeah, run so to one point three. Yeah, well, if yeah, it's, okay, if it's mapped once, on the AUM, once it will, maybe. Um, no, that was that was a Java. One point three is high. One point three by nineteen psi. Some people saying they run in excess of twenty. I yeah, okay, uh, fair enough. 1.2 seems to be reasonable. Um, 22.5 yes, is... is peak boost on the KO3. Well, yeah, okay, so that's the point at which the compressor just will not give any more. Yeah. But the rest of the components will not be good for that, I'm sure. Certainly not in the long term. Um, crank wheel, rods. Rods are 300 to change. And a KO3 won't take you there. Uh, yeah, KO3 I'm... S will get you up into the high 280s. No, mid 280s. KO4 will get you into the high 280s without changing mm. rods or anything like that. If you want to go beyond 280, 300, from what I remember, it's been a while since I looked into yeah. it because obviously I was so looking into this you... at the very, very start of the build. Going, yeah, oh, yeah we'll you... totally do that. No, what no, are you we'll planning do on doing with the kit car? Because that is a. KO3 or a KO3S? KO3S. No, KO4 now. Sorry, it started out as a KO3 because we had the AGU out of the first A3, the silver one. Yes. And then we got Sean's TT, which is a BAM, which is a which KO4. Is the KO4. So as a base, you're at 225 brake. 225 break brake stock. Yes. And the plan will be get that working, first of all. Get the engine working with the existing Get it ECU, working, get out, drive some, it, get used it. to it a bit, and then basically take it bone stock to, I think we were talking about 260 to 280-ish, and then beyond that you want to be thinking about doing rods, because the rods are a bit soft. I mean, As the guys from DT I have don't shown, think they've, they've bent a few rods. I in. don't think you're going to want 300 brake horsepower in a car that is affectionately known <laughs> as the one, the murder wagon. <laughs> We are pretty sure it's going to kill us. Yes. However, I totally want more than three hundred brake. Like I'm, I'm pretty set at some Can point. Can you not just be happy with like two fifty per ton? Nah. I mean, we're already over and above that with two hundred and twenty five brake. So <laughs> we're at like two sixty per ton at this point. If we hit eight hundred, let me uh, let me I just break out the old calculator again. Policy, but at the yeah. same time, I watch way too much true crime for that to be like. Yeah, you can't risk it at this point. No. Yeah, it'll, it'll just look dodgy. Uh, times um, by. Are you working out how much you weigh, or? I've been. I don't bear with me. Two hundred and twenty-five brake. Hold, please, Corley. Your business is important to us. Five by four. Yes. Oh. Times by five. Yeah. So we're two hundred and eighty-one per ton. If we hit eight hundred kilos, uh, you're going to be above eight hundred, though. Surely. I don't think you're so. You're going to weld your way to 900 So this is so again this is this is where we were t- Chris and I were talking last time. We were working it out. The chassis at the moment is going to be about 350, I believe. Yeah. Um, there are alley panels going on which are going to make it a little bit lighter in some places, but mm-hmm. again, we ballparked the the chassis bare at 300. Mm-hmm. But because we measured it sort of the 310 to 320 mark, but it had pedal box lines and a couple of the odds and ends in. Yeah. I think the windscreen might have been in then as well. But yeah, so with that stuff in, I think 
without panels, mm. as in, like, remove any panels that are removable, so wings and um, bo uh, bonnet, boot lid, you know, whatever you want to... Sorry, not wings. Bonnet and yep. boot lid, however you want to describe them, given where the engine is. Uh, I think you're talking about 350, 360, thereabouts. By the time you throw suspension on... Mm -hmm. So, sorry, engine first. Engine is supposed to be something like 180. So your is that with fluids or? That's I think that's wet. That's with oil in. Okay. We're losing a little bit off the back because we've not got the power takeoff to go down the prop shaft. So we mm -hmm. lose 20 kilos for that. So 180 with fluids, I think, see, appears to be reasonable. Um, oh yeah, because it was go, a four-wheel drive engine, wasn't yes. it? Yes. It came out the Quattro, so it has the. Have you got a blanking off. plate for that? Or? No, you take it off. Well, yes and no. You take the bla you take the box off. You put a blanking plate on, and then a different um, output shaft on, oh, which right. I have or okay. have sourced. So that goes on. So I think the engine gearbox combo is about one eighty. So let's say three sixty. That's four twenty five twenty with engine mm -hmm. gearbox and the bodywork and the chassis on. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we worked out the kilos are about a hundred. So the wheels are about, no, sorry, the wheels are 80, mm -hmm. all up. Yep. The suspension is... N I've lost track of your maths, so... Well, it's four... You've lost track of your maths I've lost track of well. 360, 425, so let's call it 500. Yeah. 580 with wheels. Mm -hmm. Suspension is what another hundred kilo? Yeah. So six maybe eight, maybe six yeah, eighty maybe less, but there's room to take that off if we rebuilt the rear arms because yeah. the rear arms weigh about 15, 15, 20 kilo, 15 <laughs> kilos a piece. Unsprung weight. Yeah, exactly. White Knight yeah. makes a good point. This calls for a spreadsheet. Yeah, it probably, it probably does. does. Anyway. You uh, have too so much power. I, 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 I still think we can hit under 800. I think under 700 so you is want, a pipe dream with You want under 800 and you want over 300 brakes. Yes. It's been nice knowing. <laughs> it's, I, it's, it, when you, you modulate it with your right foot. You know, you only, you only need it in the street yeah, and out sure. the corner. And he's going to have, in fairness, tubes. he's going to have mm. a lot of downforce. It's going to need a lot of downforce, but it's going to have a lot of downforce because of the design of some of the bodywork, the diffuser, the floor, the front wings, sure. all of these things. So it's going to be quite sticky, all things considered. Yes, I, I still think it would be advisable, that, that is a good point Emily makes, that you probably want, given that this is going to be driven by multiple people, you yeah. probably want a 100 brake... 200 brake, oh, 250 yes. yeah, and 300 yeah. brake maps. You want flips. Yeah. You want you and and that that switch <laughs> that switch can be labelled quite amusingly, I suspect. Yes. Yeah. So we have. So if we go to, um, if we go to 300 horsepower, mm -hmm. that's 375 a ton. Yeah. If we hit 800, now again, this is all dependent on on hitting that. If we put pistons, rods, bigger turbo. Yeah, bigger injectors. Yeah, I I've seen these reliably running at four hundred. Uh, the last one that I saw actually was there's going to be a lot of that money. Was, that there's was, going to be a lot. Oh yeah, no, too much, no, one hundred percent. This money. is a like a, a stupid down the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four hundred and twenty divided by four times by five is five hundred and twenty-five brake per ton. At that point, we are better than a Veyron. Yeah, <laughs> which. Which is a comedy, a comedy gold point up top. However, what I'm actually more likely to do is improve the torque. Yes. And that is swapping the crank. Now, if you swap in the crank, chances are you swap the rods and the pistons at the same time, which is obviously a fairly big build. Mm -hmm. But if you swap the crank for the 2-litre TF TFSI one, you build a stroke a mortar. Yeah, stroke a mortar. <laughs> um, get, right, so hang on. get the DT guys to build me a 2-litre two 1.8T, basically. You can also bore it out and go to 2.2, theoretically. I think most people oh, the go 1. to... the 1.8 block? Yeah. How? 
Well, How is there wall thickness for that? There, there is wall thickness to 2.1, comfortably. Wall thickness for days! days. Yeah, there's comfortably to 2.1, I believe. I think you can go to 2.2 if you're like seat of your pants scared. Um, but realistically... <laughs> well, you have to wrap the block in tin, in tin foil yes, to get but, enough wall thickness. But by the same, I, I probably wouldn't because of what I saw pra uh, Prawn do to his. Uh, so he's got a... Explosive decompression? Uh, no, explosive. no, no, not even that. So he had... Uh, <laughs> it's a winged one. I come back and all I hear is better than a Veyron. Correct winged one, and you're going to keep us on the ground. So, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so he's he's competing in the motorsports, uh, the motor club... Um, what's it called? Uh, championship. So he's in one okay. of the categories for that. He's in the A class. So he mm -hmm. has a mapped 1.8T Audi A3 two-wheel drive. Lots of aero, all the rest of it, and does very well. He's won a couple of various... Two-wheel drive as in front-wheel front drive? Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, because weight. Because, so it's, because it's, touring car. It's limited. It, well, no, it's limited. You can have four-wheel drive, but you are limited by power to weight. Right. That's it. It's basically no limits on what you do, but power to weight is your threshold for different classes. So right. each class has a, has a limit as to how much power you can have <laughs> per ton. So the more weight you can get off your car, the less mass you're throwing around the corner. You're still effectively the same, but you're handling less mass. So unsprung yeah. mass, so all of these things start to matter. So mm -hmm. he's done things like removing the, boot, removing the rear well and plating over that with sheet so that he has less weight but also it means he can have a bigger diffuser yes so it's improving things incrementally mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. uh, so he he's done something like six or seven years on that engine build sort of incrementally going up then started entering it in the sports actually if anybody hasn't go and have a look at team prawn racing on um yeah if you want to bring it up on the back there right we can keep the a3 up and just switch over um so yeah team prawn racing nick vaughan uh, do go support him with all of his stuff because he is another champion person, really nice guy. Um, and he's just had his engine. T25 550 stroker visits the dyno. Will it be epic or will it blow up? Yes, basically <laughs> that. Uh, so, yeah, that's so he's been up to Badger 5 to have it remapped now, but he rebuilt wow. his with a two litre stroker um, crank in the bottom. Uh, and he's just got it remapped and it's all good. So what kind of power is that making? Uh, he hasn't said, I think it's in that video basically and I haven't had time to watch that video because I think it only came out today. I won't Could be click wrong, it because I scroll up. I'm slightly worried top. about collapsing the universe if, yeah. I, if I watch <laughs> YouTube the top while on YouTube. YouTube. post comes in. It does work. Uh, yeah, four hours ago. So I haven't had time to watch this because I was getting ready for tonight. So I don't know what power it's making yet. Mm -hmm. But the long and the short of it is uh, they they built it up and apparently it's just a wall of torque mm -hmm. from the 2 litre instead of the 1.8. But the problem he had well, that, in, that his, was... in the last race he was in, they got there the day before, they went all the way up to Croft. Now he's further south than we are, he's in Hampshire. Mm -hmm. All the way up to Croft, went out testing weird overheating things. Tried to strip the engine down, rebuilt it. I mean, if you scroll down, you'll probably see the pictures of it stripped into pieces or, yeah, jump on... Uh, yeah, go on the scene. Just go on the pictures. You you passed it, you fool. Well, this... <laughs> Photos. See all. Where? Who? Literally. What? Scroll down on, what? Your, on your left. There's the pictures. Right. See all. See all. Click the thing. Yes. Uh, and then scroll back down through that because this is all him like rebuilding it. Unhappy build yeah. face. Unhappy. This is bad. Uh, yeah, this picture here with all of the tools out everywhere is very this much. Uh, this is there's nothing like a na nice relaxing start to a race. This is nothing like a nice relaxing start <laughs> to a race weekend. They like, pulled yes. it off, checked the water pump, did all sorts of stuff, tried it, absolutely fine, running happily. Got out on track, did half a lap, temperatures looking absolutely normal, and then it goes up, and the temperatures go from nineties up into like 120 degree water temperatures. Yep. And he stripped the block apart, and if you go back on your, if you scroll up a bit, you will probably, I can't remember if he put an actual picture up of what the problem was, or whether or not it was in Jesus. the, uh, in the video only. But basically, I think it was cylinder three was cracked. The block was just cracked down the side. That was a stock wow. block. And now it, done a lot of miles, had a lot of abuse, done a lot of races, done like seasoning and a bit. 
But by the same token, that happened without being bored out. So I probably wouldn't bore it, realistically. Mm. Uh, I would probably just put the 2 litre TFSI crank in and just have more talk that way, because funsies. So, yeah. That dim breaks. Yeah. Wow. It, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. AP Racing J-hooks. Yeah. That's like five grand of brakes. Uh, yeah, and, and the rest. And, uh, Pro 5000 four pots. Yeah, they are really, really nice. He has sorted that car. I mean, it's been, okay. so he's been developing it on and off for about six so years. So it can and do this, it. right? Basically that. Yeah. And it does really, really good. Because the, the big blue bus had AP Racing yes. six pots on the front. Yeah. My God, did it stop. Yeah, and... Um, for a big car, Ga it really stopped. But he's literally built a, com a competitive race car that does and wins in the garage yes he they how many uh, exhausts does he have <laughs> so he, he built the two at the front and then just shopped on all the rest for <laughs> maximum comedy value right but yeah like straighten the, straightening the pipes less weight all of these yeah, little yeah. incremental yeah, exactly. things so it's it's really really good looking uh, i changed the wing recently oh, yeah, as well because the yeah there you go so you changed the wing because it was kicking up so far in all, I, they were dropping it down far enough that it was actually had the leading edge was higher up than the trailing edge so it was kind of down like this uh so it's like right get rid of this and put a different wing on because it was just it was basically acting more as an air brake than anything else so he swapped that one out but yeah, yeah. they won at uh, donnington wow they won their their class so it's like and he's literally built a class winning race car in a garage in a house impressive impressive which is really really cool so he's one of the people that i want to go down and like properly interview about all of the yeah. all the stuff it is a really really good looking race car um and uh, nick you, you well. love to see it don't you yeah exactly you and nick goff is the other one who's got that tt that he linked in on the oh, left he's yeah. in the same series as him but he's in the b group right uh he, so he has a lower power to weight um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's really really interesting to see cool stuff. All of the, all this stuff, and yeah. as I say, it's a literal winning race car, <laughs> race winning race car built in a garage. But it's what? road. But it's road legal, and it's completely road legal. He can he doesn't always drive it there, but he does all of his testing on the road, mm -hmm. driving it around, making sure things are running, how things feel. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think the only thing he really changes is the wheels. For different tyre compounds, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From sort of road to, to track. Yeah, impressive, impressive stuff. It's it's genuinely amazing. I yeah. love it. So we've actually we ended up with a through shenanigans. We ended up with a spare compressor. We got our compressor, and I ended up with another complete compressor unit that I have no need for whatsoever. And I noticed that Nick doesn't have one. So at some point, I've offered I, I'm going to take it down to him. I've offered it to him in lockdown, and was like, mm. I have no need for this. I have no space for this. Yeah. I just need to get rid of one of my compressors. So it's going to mm. get covered in pedal box stickers, and I'll see if I can. Where sneak, is he? Sneak on. Um, he's not in Southampton. He's down Southampton Way. Right. Like okay. and basically yeah. down, head down the M3 an hour. He's yeah. in and around that area. I don't want to dox him, but <laughs> 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 I know he's. He's not feist in oh, Hampshire. So. I'm moving to Hampshire. So. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's it's. Cool. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to send this compressor down to him with some pedal box stickers. Try and sneak us put a sneaky pedal box sticker on the back of the car, maybe. <laughs> good stuff. But yeah, it's been a, a pretty good, fun, wide ranging stream. I think we've gone as as Nyack said. Oh, are you calling it? We're only at two and a half hours. Oh, I wasn't calling it. I was just doing a nice little retrospective. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> we're still halfway through talking about the A3. Yeah. <laughs> and A3, like, I was just complaining about the clutch, and then we got uh, we got talking about the other A3 engine, which is obviously in the track bay car, and then you started talking about random race cars, pop the other one which also happen to be A3s. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. So, mm -hmm. essentially, that is exactly the same as what his started as. Yes. Actually, no, it's not because his his, his, his two wheel drive. This is four wheel drive. Four wheel drive. Yes. Haldex, so true. yeah, but by all intents, yes, identical things. Yeah, pretty much. So we could, once your lander is done with this, make one. If pedal box is big enough, maybe we could get a race car. Yeah. How well, I mean, so that? what's what's the What's the actual like design brief for the usage of the murder wagon? 
Is that just track day lols? Oh yeah, because we would never get the cage um, past an MSA logbook. Oh uh, yeah, 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 because you we just hadn't. yeah we just wouldn't ever get it into we wouldn't it would despite it filling all of the requirements like all of the specifications you can't prove the of an MSA of the metal you no can't no prove I can the prove welding. that that's all that's all good enough like I have a receipt for the me for the metal right which will prove the provenance yeah uh, so that's not a problem. Um, and to do that anyway, they normally just drill a tiny little inconspicuous hole somewhere inside it, and that's how they verify it. Mm. Genuinely, I, I was surprised. Mm. Yeah. Um, they don't ultrasound it. Or no. X -ray. I mean, they could, but expensive ex compared to just drilling a hole and going, "Yep." But either way, NDT on the welds, maybe. Yes. Yeah, so the the problem that you have with it, as I've we, we have talked about this before. Um, is the cage in the back. The minimum cage that you need for a race series is a hoop over the top, a crossbar stay for, uh, across the diagonal and stays from the hoop down to the turrets at the back. That's so the kind of the classic roll cage yep. that you see on a Caterham 7. Yeah, that's the minimum cage you can get away yep. with. And for competition, um, for MSA stuff, you can, you can enter competitions as long as the competition is also happy with that, but you can get an MSA logbook spec on a cage like that for anything up to two liters. So as a 1.8 liter car, yep. we are fine within within that spec. So the basic uh, design yes, is Emmy, fine. Yes, City Car Cup is absolutely the first thing that I would be doing as a pedal box race car, mostly because I need to get a race license. Secondly, I need more race time on track. And thirdly, I would much rather be on a track with lots of people with very similar cars to actually see if I'm capable rather than enter a field where I know I'm going to get whipped by people just careening by me and be really disheartened by it. Yes. So I'd much rather do the City Car Cup. And as Bomb proved, you can do that for about eight grand all in, and you still own the race car out of that. So your second season is infinitely cheaper as a result. Uh, but yes, absolutely want to do that. Might kind of have plans. Not that I can enact Adrian, them have, right now. You have so many. Plans. I have so many plans. Not so, that I can enact them right now, but I would totally do totally do that given enough time. Basically, to do that, we have to finish the kit car because that takes up a good chunk of time. As so, this is shown. this is I've I've got it up on. So it's I go. So ha wait, hang on, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I'll, we'll get to that in a second. I'm talking about cages. Oh, okay. So the cages, yeah. so you can have that, and they have to be built out of spec metals. You can either do it in 50 mil by two or 46.5 mil by two and a half mil tube for all of the mandatory members, and over diagonal and down to the turrets are mandatory for under yeah. two liters. Yep. If you're putting in bars that go forward, you're putting in a halo that comes around like that. You can either do a halo or you can do a arms that come down and drop into the floor at the front. Yep. Also mandatory have to be 46.5 mil. Okay. You can then also brace between them in 46.5 mil across the front. Right. And that's the mandatory members across there. The door bars can be in 40 mil. Right. Uh, I think. I seem to remember that the door bar, the crossbars can okay. be in 40 mil. Um, something else can be 40 mil as well, but I can't think what it is. Oh, the crossbars in the rear stays I think can be 40 mil but I could be wrong but I think most people seem to make them out of the thicker stuff anyway it's the door bars that are normally thinner because they're harder to climb across yeah. um, so that's what you need for that now ours is 46 and a half across the hoop the stays and the diagonal and for the harness bar that goes across it yep uh, the downside is I didn't have enough 46 mil to do forwards so I only had uh, 40 mil bars that come off the front and then go down into the chassis. Right. I'm happy that it's strong enough. The MSA book would look at it and go, well, you yep. don't technically need it, but on the other hand, you've welded it to the cage. And therefore... On the flip side, you've welded it to the cage exactly where you would normally weld the A, the a pillars and forward bars to. Mm -hmm. So the whole welding fatigue, heating the metal and heat cycling it and mm. losing strength shouldn't matter. Basically, it's a lot of things that you could look at and they could go, yes, we understand why you've done this. Yes, it doesn't matter. We can let it slide because it's not mandatory for what you are. On the flip side, you've done it and you've not used the right tube. Yeah, so the likelihood the, is that you're going to you're going to get rules lawyered. The likelihood what you've is done. you could probably have a conversation with the MSA to the effect of 
we've done this, but do we need it? Yes, no, etc., etc. We know we are safer than normal. Than minimum. Than minimum. Yes. But essentially, it comes down to whether or not they would agree with that. Now, in there's, my eyes, there's because no benefit. I'm, there's no benefit to them to agree. No. Now, in so my eyes, because I'm not looking to compete with it, I don't care. Yeah. It would be nice to have them look over and be like, oh, neat. But, but I'm not going to. Yeah, because they because they won't. there They'll are too say, many this other is things. Non-compliant. Yeah, there are too many other things that they would probably disagree with. Now on the you see now this is tempting. I'm being given cookies off screen here, which is marvellous. These are these are fresh out, so I'm ah. definitely going to have a cookie. Well, earlier today. What's in these uh, cookies? They are white chocolate and I think raisin. Blueberries. Blueberries. It's a pretty good combo. Hmm. Uh, yes, so that's, that's kind of cake. that's kind of where it's at hmm. um, with the cage on that. There are a few other reasons that it, they would look at it and go, "Lol, no." If they were being super picky down that run, but it's all part in parts that are non-mandatory. I, I, say, I mean, I think I think you should probably be yeah. mainly worried about trying to pass the um, SVA. Yeah, precisely. That's yeah. that's your first problem. And the cage for the SVA comes down to: Does it look? Janky. <laughs> does it Marvelous. look? Does it look like it's been badly fit? Does it look like it's been badly made? Are there horrible bad kinks in it? Any of these things? Mm-hmm. You know, we've we folded all of our stuff on the the hydraulic vendors around formers, so it's not bad. There is some deformation because you can't physically take a circle and bend it exactly round. There is squeezing, <laughs> but it's been done right. So yeah, so that's kind of where that is. Um, the City Car Cup is one, uh, Peugeot 107s, Toyota Igos, or Citroen C1s. Now, Which is all the same car. Basically the same car with different bits. Badge manufacturing. Now, Bomb, in my eyes, correctly went for the C1 because it's the lightest of the three from stock. So when you pull everything out, logic says you must be lighter. Mm-hmm. Unless all of the innards in the other cars happen to be heavier, and therefore you end up with a lighter car anyway. So, yeah. Kind of a weird one. I think mm. there is still a minimum weight anyway that you need to be. Mm-hmm. Because there is a ballast box that goes on. But obviously if your weight is all low down, winner, winner. Mm. You can lower it by having to put ballast in the bottom rather than having a heavy roof structure. You're mm-hmm. onto a winner there. So mm. yeah, it's basically buying the car, um, which is the one litre. I seem to believe it's the one litre. Plus many parts being added on. Now, mm-hmm. the parts, they sell you a kit with the seats, the cage, and all of your mandatory safety stuff that will get you in uh, to the championship. Mm-hmm. And that is 2700 I think, plus VAT. I could be wrong. Uh, wow, I can't find this at all. Citroen, there we go. Citroen C1. Uh, and it's the earliest model one, isn't it? I don't know. So it's the yeah one litre one litre three door Citroen C1, it, on an 08 plate can be had for five hundred pounds. Right. Okay. So that plus. So let's <clears> say <throat> you get lucky. Let's so the well, self no. build kit. Let's go with, you 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 want to start with something a little bit more, guaranteed in inverted commas. Let's call it a grand because there's plenty for in and around a grand on here. Okay. So you pick a nice-ish one mm-hmm. for a grand. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the full City Car Cup kit is 2700 plus In, that. No, one, including that. Sorry, one second, because we're currently on... There we go. Uh, yeah, 2700 including that. Okay, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. And that is your bolt-in cage and all of the spec parts as well. I'd forgotten it was spec parts. So gas coilovers, 15-inch wheels... Powerflex full car kit, back box, footrest, door cards, various blanking plates, and your your seat base. Uh, so yeah, so there is also an ECU and a bunch of other parts. And then the optional stuff is the race seat, side mount, six point harness, which you still have to have. You still have to have all of these things. Mm. It's just whether or not, oh, if you happen to have things already, if you've already got stuff, then you mm. could move things around, like the seat, if you've got a custom seat made or whatever. But ultimately, if you want to just go, oh, I need everything, it's what, three, four, four thousand one hundred fifty. Yes, yeah, call it forty-two hundred by the time you got post and packaging. Mm. <laughs> okay, so competitor will be responsible 
sending off ECU yeah. for an additional, oh, an additional okay, yeah. By um, the time you do it, call it four and a half and grand. Two, which by the time you also mm. change all the fluid services and do mm -hmm. all everything else, you're four and a half grand in. And after that, it's your entry fees into the mm. um, into the events, which is basically what Bomb said uh, when they were doing it. They they kind of worked through it. I'm just going to swap the uh, the back monitor onto yours. There we go. So yeah, so they do two rounds at each of these. I believe the first year when Binky and Co did it, they did it, and it was it was with another um, they were in with another class whilst they were basically building up enough people to run it individually but now right. it's just the C1s on track on their own at the various different events because they do lots and lots of races in a weekend yes. lots and lots of different competitors so they don't just do like the C1 group they'll do the C1 and this and this and this and so when this. you say C1 you mean well, all C three, sorry, all yeah, three yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. the yeah, C1 I go or the 107 hmm so yeah, so it's who actually made them? Sorry, you say they're all they're all three of the same car. Yeah, is it a Toyota or is it a? That is an interesting question. Uh, as far as I know, it was badge engineered between all of them. Yeah. So, but but somebody will have actually manufactured it. Will have come out of a Toyota factory or a Peugeot yeah. factory or a. Uh, find me the wiki. Uh, city car sold by Toyota, built alongside the C1 and Peugeot at the Toyota Peugeot Citroen Czech plant. So it is a oh, joint so it's, plant. It's PSA. T well, TPCA, Toyota Peugeot Citroen Automobile, uh, in Czech, a joint venture. In, oh, Czech, in a joint venture in Colin. Uh, no, Colin in the Czech Republic. So yes. Would so, you like to try that sentence again? <laughs> I mean, it's getting late. The Toyota you've, Igo. You've been streaming for a while. The Toyota Igo. The Toyota Igo is built alongside the Citroen C1, Peugeot 107 and 108 at, at the Toyota Peugeot Citroen Automobile Czech joint venture in Colin, the Czech Republic, but it's shortened to TPCA. So well done. That was. <laughs> yeah. Whew. You're earning, you're earning your cookie there. Yeah. Okay. So they are effectively, like. Frankenstein's of everybody's bits. Yes. That's cool. So it's not like the GT86 and the BRZ where no. if you peel off the Toyota badges it says Subaru it's underneath. It clearly yeah. says Subaru. Okay. So so they're driving around various places. Croft, which looks slightly obscene. <laughs> Cadwell, Alton Park, Snetterton. God, oh, Jesus, the Snetterton 300. Ooh, can you change the rear thing back again? I don't know. Me? I was pretty sure I set rear to desk feed. That isn't. Yeah, but that is. Yeah, that's confusing. Yeah, because the program is on. Do you want the program on desk? Yes. There we go. Yes. So we have the. Apparently, I do actually need some sugar. Well done, me. Yeah. I'm starting to understand though why you normally have one person that does one thing mm -hmm. yes and like what i currently do would probably be three people yep. in like a professional sense yes uh, probably more yeah like you're a one person gallery and it's good fun even at jinx when we were doing proper stuff well proper um we had five people in our gallery and i was doing six jobs mm. <laughs> and there was still five of us in the gallery So yeah, you're going to have to talk while I'm eating cookies. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just looking through kind of the process here, and obviously it starts with getting a license. Mm -hmm. um, a UK ARDS license. We know a few people who've got licenses, though, don't we? Ian? Ian certainly got one. Must do. He must do. Surely. But I don't know if he's still racing currently. Probably I would, not. Well, obviously I know Nick. Yeah. So, yeah. None of the, none of the various scum run teams. Yes, ever... please, Mint. What was that? Do you want an extra person to run things? <laughs> I also Sorry, need... I wasn't complaining. It's just it isn't... <laughs> no, but if we're going to add in the tele the the dialing yeah, yeah, stuff as well. Having yeah. a, having a second would be really handy. Hey, when COVID properly lifts, we have enough space to have a small studio audience. Oh, that could get interesting. Yeah, <laughs> you could do outside broadcasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
a tadpole. So one of the we things. We should do it outside. Like if we. we yeah. I mean, it would take. But like next to the kit car would be quite nice. If we have yeah. long, longer video cables, is all we need. We just need one person in here. Yeah. Bearing in mind, you can run the atom remotely from a laptop out there. Hmm. And the cameras and everything else, it can. We can pick this yeah. up and do an, <laughs> and do literally an OB. Yeah. Wibble wobble. Literally just outside the window, but it still counts, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, wibble wobble. Yes, it has been some time. Uh, Chris has gone back to um, <laughs> to Wales uh, for a week, so we've been doing a few live streams with him, and it just happens to be that you've dropped in with James, Hello. who, if you've been watching things, owns that nine four four that we've did been own. did own yes. that nine four four. We've been doing a lot of work on. Um, also, I have started, as you happen to be in chat, I've started making uh, progress on actually vinyling that door that you very kindly sent us the vinyl for. So thank you very much for that. However, I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> Mostly because it's taking a lot longer to clean all of the rust that's rusted into the plastic slightly off the top. So oh I need to do a little bit more work cleaning that. I have got some UPVC cleaner now that I can actually use. and can Which, which door is this? The one by the car, because it's always this big white monstrosity in the back. Oh. And uh, Wibble Wobble happily sent us some black vinyl to vinyl the door, and some blue and some orange to pedal box the Oh, to pedal box well. it. Oh, yeah. sweet. Excellent. So, yes, we, um, and then I just need to actually left over finish. Is turning uh, Three Phases' new Citroen into um, its proper space cow persona. Yeah. We're going to do some. <laughs> She's also got, she's already mm. called Daisy the Space Cow. So right, okay, so she's going to have black black yeah. vinyl. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Good, good. Yeah, so yes. the to-do list is significant and uh, and only growing, which is worse. <laughs> Pick, Particularly when you're looking, when I'm uh, yeah. also now... Pick your looking. battles. <laughs> no. no. That's too many battles. No. <laughs> Put some of them back. <laughs> no, I want all of the war. Have we lost? Have you just no. flipped a cookie? Have you flipped a cookie cam? No, I mean technically... We could have, like, we could have some cookie cam. cam. Cookies need to go a little bit closer to James to be... For, for, cookie, for cookie cam... No, everything's working. We, we really no, need, we the... need some CV shopping channel no. type. <laughs> I really felt like shopping channel. When Do we were, all of the battles. When we when we were doing the um, oh, yeah. when the we, CG log. Yeah. I so when we so we went through the Thunderbirds, I'm like, and now we have... Yes, and now we have these beautiful cookies. Comes with I'm complimentary gonna... plate. <laughs> you you got to you got to just tilt it slightly so go. it reflects the light. <laughs> How beautiful is that? Yes, beautiful cookies. And complimentary plate. Look at dope. <laughs> but yes. You so, didn't want cookies earlier, otherwise I would have offered them to you. Hey, we've been on air, on air for nearly three hours. Like, well, we've got to go to three, three hours and one minute. Yes, absolutely. So, yes. so, so yeah, somebody so commented go on our Lotus Amira one. Uh, saying, oh my god, you did it for three hours, could you have made it any longer? And <laughs> so I have yes. the comments like, yes. Well, we're going to go three to three hours. hours and one minute, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So now we've got a minimum. Yeah. Uh, so yes, you know, we yes, Amy, at... I'm sure we can organise the cookies for the live studio audience as an incentive to stick around for the whole three hours. You, I mean, even in, if you're in the live audience, you still have to watch on YouTube for that watch time. <laughs> yes. Because uh, yeah. you have to comment in the chat as well as you go along so that everyone can see everything. <laughs> <laughs> Pedal cookies. So yeah, that's uh, that's totally what we need for that. I did do pedal box themed biscuits. We did have some pedal box themed biscuits quite some time ago, uh, and we actually t we we went out for a drink in the evening and we took them to our local favourite bar, and they went, "That's amazing!" Yeah. And I think we got a free round of shots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that milk? Yeah. yeah. In the before times. In the before times. Yes. Anyway, we were looking at all the different well, classes we just, that they do. We were just kind of. You were looking oh, at. Oh, they're all. racing. They're racing in Smetherton on yes. Sunday. They are racing on. on uh, yeah, they are. It's uh, and to be fair, do you know what? I'm almost certain that Prawn is racing on Sunday. Well, I could be wrong. BRSCC Super Sport Endurance Cup. Uh. That looks like the only because all the others are MX fives. Ah, uh, okay. It must so be the following weekend. Then. Championship, club, and championship, yeah. and Super Cup. MX five Super Cup. Uh, so yeah, so that's on on Sunday, and it is always it's good good fun to watch that. Um, mm. I've watched. I normally, if I'm working in the garage, I will put it on on the screen whilst I'm tinkering and welding and doing all yeah. the rest. <coughs> but they do loads of different championships, so. 
Yeah, I was just. You have a look through some of the championships. Well, I was, I was just having a think about like that Aston that we spec'd up oh, earlier, yeah. and whether it would be useful to uh, to have that mm. in for the GT4 challenge. Mm. But uh, I don't know what Aston Martin's entry level GT racer. I so the, that An budget entry level that budget that you had of what was it five thousand pounds for the car, eight. the kit, and the entries. No, eight grand covers eight, everything. Eight grand covers everything. I think that might just pay for the fuel for one of these. <laughs> yeah. One make series, Aston Martin, original V8 Vantage GT4s and N24s. Not bad. Yeah. yeah. So what are the other ones they do? 50 minute races with a compulsory pit stop. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm not sure if I'm in the right uh, race calendar or... Because under formulae there's only a couple. Um, oh no, no, it keeps no, going no, there. Yeah. So we got then the GT Challenge, mm -hmm. post-1996 GT cars. Yeah. What the hell That's, are they? Yeah, this is fun. Okay. Yeah. This is so, basically all the big boys. This is this is big boys. Mm -hmm. Proper big boys. Mm -hmm. guys. All, all post-96 GT sports cars, with <laughs> emphasis firmly on gentleman drivers. That's incredibly sexist. <laughs> wow, that is sexist. Sorry. Um, each race is typically I, I, 50 minutes long with a compulsory pit I think it's more of an inference, really. <laughs> well, hmm. Yeah, okay. Three categories for FIA GT4, GT3, and Open GT. Mm -hmm. So GT4 challenges any GT4 car. GT3 challenges any GT3 car. And Open GT is any sports saloon of a type first built between 95 and 2007. Oh, do you know what that includes? <laughs> Lotus Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so in the pictures here, you can just see what looks like. There's uh, that's a 911 of quite an elderly flavour. Yeah, he is probably having a shit ton of fun, trying not to die mm -hmm. because that is an old enough 911 that that has earned. The I name. believe that, is that has earned the name Widowmaker. Right. Okay. So that one looks quite fun, but ridiculously expensive. Then you've got the Innes Island Cup. Bring back the glory days of GT and touring car racing from the 1960s. Okay, so the this Thunderbird is, in. Well, this is this is going to be this yeah this is going to be like um, little alphas and lots yeah. and lots of lotuses basically. Um, probably and um, Mark II Jags as well. GT and touring cars built before 1966. Well, uh, it's got to be the type no of Thunderbird wood. for me. <laughs> of a type that would have appeared in international events in period conforming yeah. to FI Appendix K. Wow. So, and then classes for 1600, 16 to two and a half, two and a half to three, or three above, three and above. Which that's, means the... That's there's going to be some There's going to be some spicy stuff in there. I'd imagine that's... I think that's the same one, in essence, that the Galaxy uh, competes in at Goodwood. Galaxy, a Ford Galaxy 500, oh, which also right. competes alongside minis, hmm. and it's one of the funniest things in the world to watching watch. this. Like, ah, I'm coming to eat you because they start in reverse. In the they start in reverse order, so the Galaxy is fairly obviously because it can just put so much power on down the straight. It always starts at the back and just eats the field. <laughs> but you see so many times this Galaxy just coming down towards this mini like I am going to eat you and then they'll hit a corner and the Galaxy will go <laughs> oh my god not right now <laughs> and slow down the mini will get a little bit away and then yeah. go on the other side and it's like I am going and it'll just keep going round like this yeah. until eventually the Galaxy and the Mini go into a corner together and the Galaxy comes out the other side and just opens up. Because <laughs> that's the same engine it's, as mine. I mean, even stock, that's 315 brake. Yeah. And yeah, sure, it weighs a ton, ton and a half, probably a bit more. Hmm. Against the Mini. But, it's got but you're probably up against a Mini that's got like 50 brake. If it's 50, like... si yeah, 50, 60 brake, maybe a bit more, but it weighs nothing. Hooray! Also, coming out of a corner, it doesn't matter. If you have brute force, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how light you are. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, uh, Intermark, Jack Fair, scroll down a couple more. 70s to 1995. Yeah. Um, so that's basically the 50s, predecessor to 50s the pre 50s racers. Yeah. Pre-war pre -war racers. Stuff, yeah. And then you get down into like the 7s, Formula Ford. 7, Formula Ford. Nova. Uh, it should keep going further. Oh yeah, it goes way further. Then... Yeah, Ooh. then it's the 310 Caterhams, then the British GTs. What on earth is that? 
they don't, they, that, yeah. that don't look very British. Oh, it's not British cars. No. It's just... It's just the, the, like the British GT Championship. Essentially, anything that you would see going into Spa or mm -hmm. the Ring 24-hour GT mm. things fits into that. Uh, which is normally pretty good fun. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so it's GT3s, GT4s, GTCs, and Invitationals. Yeah. Uh, right, pop back up another one. I'm trying to remember what the... I'm trying to remember the name of the one that they race in, basically. Hmm? Yeah, Supercarts. A friend of mine does Supercarts. Actually, I could ask Ollie. Yeah, mm. that's a good point. Um, but then he also races in America a, a good few times. Um, so that's... He did most of a season, actually, out in America and just flew back and forth, back and forth to do the Supercarts. Mm. Doing 160 in a Supercart. Like, nope. Mm -mm. Mm. Nope, do not if like. That, if that goes wrong. Oh, horrible. Mm. And then, yeah, Club Sport Trophy, that's the one. So if you go in the Club Sport, because mm -hmm. actually, before you go in the Club Sport, you've got the Fiesta one, which is obviously just Fiestas. Mm -hmm. If you go down another one, that's the Fiesta Juniors, which is fantastic as an idea. MX5, Formula, another Formula Ford one, more MX5s, MX5s, MX5s for various different ones. Super Sport Endurance. Endurance. Yeah. The, yeah. A couple of Ford ones. Yeah. F4s. Is that the bottom? No. The Fun Cup. Hang on. Check out the Fun Cup. <laughs> I, I want to see if it, like, what's the odds on chance of hitting that? This seems like. Is it just. Is it, it, it all might Beatles? Just be Beatles. Uh, I mean, it looks like just Beatles. First conceived in 97, the Fun Cup Endurance Championship provides some of the best value, blah, 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 blah. All cars are equal, tubular steel, space frame chassis, identical silhouette style bodywork, lightly tuned 1.8 litre yeah. BW Audi. Oh, well, we know we can get one of them. Yeah. Uh, Three to five on... hour long racing. Wow. wow, that's amazing. Two to six drivers, 10 grand prize to any new team of drivers that wins their first cup race. Challenge the incredible Spa 25 hours race. <laughs> That's hilarious. Love it. That seems like it would be a ton of fun. Yeah. The cars look awesome. They are all just like beetle reps, effectively, but as you, as yeah, you they're, say... Well, they're, sil they're silhouette beetles, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. On a space frame chassis with a 1.8T, lunacy. Fun times. I, yeah. wonder, I wonder where the engine is. Presumably mid-rear? Presumably mid, yeah. Well, as mid-rear as it gets. But like that is that is mad. Yeah, they right. will be insane. Jump back again. Yeah. Uh, right. Which one was it? You were this one. Yes. So the club the sport. Club yeah, sport. the club sport trophy is the one that uh, that he's. I mean, there's an Alpha Spider um, convertible in the background. Mm. Uh, that's that's a bit brave. That's an this interesting choice. Up front, you got a Ginetta. Yeah, well, and they'll be doing well. A Fiesta, MX5 a Fiesta X uh, Fiesta. Yeah, uh, it is a Ford Fiesta. Is that a Fiesta? Yeah, that's a Fiesta. Okay. Mini MX5. Mini MX5. Yeah. Can't tell what the blue thing um, is. Yeah, it could be another MX5. Yeah, it's, it's an slow, MX5. So it could be another MX5. Yeah, if, if you look at the lights, the it's a Mark One MX5. Yeah, with right. the the edge. You are correct. Nerd. Yeah, I know. Pedalbox Endurance Team, sign me up. Oh yes. <laughs> I mean, if we can do three hours... Three oh, look hours at that. Wibble Wobble. All this term of multi-mark racing wants me to get back to marshalling at Ulton again. 750MC. Well, that's exactly the one that uh, he competes in, I believe. Is the 750MC. Right. <clears throat> so we need to look at the classes, don't we? Yeah. So, entry fee, 345, blah, blah, blah. One second. Yeah, so dyno driven oh, each right. event. Okay, so it's not the BR. It's not this one. It's the 750 Motor Club is the one that he's in, which have a whole other slew. So if you go to 750mc.co.uk, well, like, let's just have a quick look at this. Their so front page they just do, lists all of the stuff. Yeah, they do do the same kind of process that you yeah. you were mentioning. Where yeah. so you've got E, which is track at 0 to 135 bhp per ton, D, which is club at 30, 136 to 155 up to A Elite at 206 to 235 bhp per tonne. Yeah. Wow. Nice. 
Um, what, where was it? Where am I going? Uh, seven, 750mc.co.uk. Oh, winged one. If you start a team, he, he said he'll race engineer. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, I probably will. I can't do it right now, but yes, this is a... Probably, there are lots of other things. Yeah, there's a lot. Say, of, there's a lot of pick your battles. Yeah, there's a lot of things on the go at the moment. But that's this is one to basically reconsider for maybe the 2023 season. <laughs> as at an earliest part, it's not going to happen for the 2022 season without mm. a lottery win. Um, but yeah. Okay. Oh yes. Oh, we have such a ridiculous team of people here. This is brilliant. Hmm. Right. <laughs> Just expect a lot of mad weather gambles. Yeah, I've played. Um, I've played motorsport manager. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've poorly managed my team. It's all good. Uh, so yeah, so the one six the one one six trophy is quite entertaining. Um, mm -hmm. So if you so, scroll down, obviously, like a lot of these are kind of the same sort of affair, like alphas. I mean, do they ever get to the end of a race? Hmm. <laughs> Had to be said. Uh, yeah, beamers. So that is a lot of angry beamer action yeah. going on there. Mm, so yeah, it's. I don't think what the hell is this? <laughs> what <laughs> the hell? Go on, go on it. Check it out. It's amazing. <laughs> Look at that selection of vehicles. What it's, is that? Right, keep, just keep scrolling down. Yeah. No, uh, no. This is video. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's fine as long as we're. Um, as long as we're passing commentary. <laughs> Is it? That's a Ginette. Uh, sorry, no, that was a Noble, I think. That's an E36, E46. Lots um, of BMWs. There's an MGB GT. MGB GT with a, a, a MR2 behind it. Corsa B, over on the left, the white one. That's a, a Jag XJS, isn't that it? That is an XJS, I think. Yeah, it is. I recognise the lights on the back. <laughs> yeah. And there's a... Beetle. Yeah, Beetle, MR2, MR2. E30... Uh, that was the Janetta with the four lights yeah. across the back. Oh, that was a Seat Leon. There's your Mini against Minis, Civics. BMWs. I mean, there's all different classes, but at the same time... Corsa. These, yeah, Corsa B. The Jag. I love that Jag. Who is racing a Jag? What are you thinking? What hero is racing that Jag? Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, so that this is. Hang this on, does is... this mean. Wait, <laughs> Pedalbox Racing Team, sponsored by Stratland Logic. Does this mean we can have race meetings at Stratland? And then write them off and as a business, business expense. And just write them off, sure. <laughs> oh, we need a venue. Let's just get some tables around and play Motorsport Manager for the weekend and really strategy this thing out. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, Silverstone coming up. You can even play Silverstone on Motorsport Manager. Uh, so it's done on the full Silverstone GP circuit. Nice. 70 teams. 70 teams. Three and six drivers. Unique race. Each team has a lap to complete the circuit as many times as they can within six hours, with only one of their team cars running at any one time. As comes into the pit lane, the next car can be dispatched. So you, it's but like anything, a relay race. Anything closed wheel, excluding some historics. This means an eclectic mix <coughs> of everything from 1960s midgets, M3 smart cars, TCRs, Austin A30s, Caterhams. Wow, that's. Mental. So okay, we could actually put highest number of laps. Yeah. So you could just you could just slam every car we've got onto. Yes. Okay. Highest number of laps. There's also the more hotly contested handicap victory, which in theory could be won by any of the teams, credited with a certain number of credit laps presumed to have been run before the race started. The results are then calculated from the credit laps and the actual laps covered by each team in the six hours. See who's beaten the rest and the handicapper. Right. In addition to the overall so basically, if you turn up with like a, a fleet of like race prepped everything, yes. then you get zero laps. You get maximum handicap. And if yeah. if if we roll up with the contents of Adrian's driveway, <laughs> you realise the Thunderbird could enter. Yes. That. Oh yeah. Well, I'd have to cage it. That's the problem. I'm not caging the Thunderbird because oh, yeah. yeah, this is the downside. You'd <clears> you'd <throat> have to cage any of these things. Yeah. Um, that is that is quite spectacular. <laughs> wibble wobble. Aid's to do list is starting to look starting to resemble the M1 and the major projects are services. We are currently at Woolly Lake. <laughs> yeah, we haven't got far, have we? Yeah. It's a long way to junction seventy. Yeah, it is. But that that picture, like with what, just what is this grid? That what looks the like, hell is this grid? That's a radical. Radical. Followed by a radical, radical and a radical. radical. I think that's that is 
Well, it's got JPR on the front. Is that a Jag like XJ no. two hundred and twenty race? That's, spec no, that's or not two hundred and twenty. Don't be mad. Well, that's what, definitely not look at the canopy. Look at the canopy. Um, it's a single seat. I'm sure. thinking Noble, to be honest. No way! But you've got a Ferrari 360 behind yeah, that. Yeah, then, the, then, then you've the got a Ferrari 60 with a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. With an Italian flag down the middle of it. The TCR. Somebody who's just wandered in from some caterums. kind of rallying. Yeah, some Then a caterums. sea of caterers. That's a Cerbera. Yes, that's a Cerbera. Somebody, somebody's bold entering and an that's, endurance wave. That's, like a, that's an Escort. That, no, that's an M3. Is it? Yeah, that's an M3. Look at the bonnet vents. Mitzi. Uh, Mitsubishi. Yeah. Evo. And then a Civic. God. Oh, there's 911. This there's 911 behind the Civic. Is it? Right there. Yeah, it's, a, it's an egg eye. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's a yeah. fried egg. It's a 996. Uh, yes, yeah, I am this much of a nerd when it comes to spotting cars. <laughs> I mean, we could we could play the whole game of like how fuzzy, how <laughs> yes. fuzzy a car. How fuzzy can it's like an eye test for car yeah. f car nuts. Like, okay, you're yeah. looking down a grid. I need you to identify the fifth car back. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Okay, so we have the makings of a ridiculous pe pedal box racing team, which I'm not gonna lie has been kind of like tickling around the back of my head for quite some time, especially doing the, um, the City Car Cup, to be honest. It's a bit crowded at the back of your head, isn't That's, it? That's... Oh, God. Yeah, it's why um, all the hair's falling off. We need to crowdfund it's pedal just... box racing and get you guys on the grid next season. I can't do... I literally can't do next season because hopefully the next 12 months contains a bunch of insanity outside of the car world that I need to get off the ground. But, as I say, the 2023 season actually, actually has a chance. If all of that goes well for mm -hmm. way, way more stupid things on top of that as well. But you are absolutely right, this has to happen. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that pick is mi missing a Volvo Estate boat. You should fix this. <laughs> That's where Chris comes in. Yes, yeah. yeah. Chris, we need a 940. Why? Because we want rear wheel drive, boat action. Or, actually, to be fair, how, how risky can we go as a fleet? Let's say three cars. So hang on, how many was it? It was, wait, wait, between, wait. it was between me... three and six, I think. So it was between yeah, three, three and six, six cars. cars. So minimum three cars. This is We're the three car for... garage again, isn't it? We're going for maximum risky here. Okay. So, so we you want... want an alpha. An alpha, so like a one, one An five... alpha that we bought the day before. I mean, I, Sight unseen. I think the person who brought a brought a, a GTV convertible is feeling particularly brave. That was there. a different race, but okay. So, but you could. This is this is maximum. So you want something Italian and fragile. You want something British and fragile. Anything. You want something. So basically, you need to represent. The, you 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 want to represent the three harbingers of destruction, which are it Italy. Yes. In, in turn, well, specifically Alpha. Right. Something British Leyland. Okay. And yep. what's your third? Because those two are like set in and nailed on, yes. Yeah. They're, they're obvious. I mean, I mean, there is the ultimate option a cheap V12. So, like, the, <laughs> just, the, the BL, we can hit that. The bulk, can, the bulk tacular. Yeah, we can yeah. do with, you can do a Jag V12. Yeah. That could be your British Leyland. Jag V12, like that XJS. Yeah, that would be good. That okay. would be some comedy goal. GM. Something yeah, GM. GM. See, I think something GM is probably a little bit too safe. Unless um, you're going to be like lol North Star engine at like ninety nine thousand miles, because they are <laughs> famous for for basically the problem with the North Star V eight. Brilliant idea. Transverse mounted V eight engine, front of the Cadillacs, fantastic. They just plop in the front, lots of packaging. Yeah. Unfortunately, they almost like clockwork write themselves off when the head bolts come away from the block and it's always just over a hundred thousand miles and it's not the bolts that fail it's the block it's right. the threads in the block basically give up and just go <laughs> <laughs> there it's is like, nothing left oh, you, you can't he you can't heli coil what isn't there yeah basically that it's just it's just, yeah. it's ruined a citroen 2 cv does feel like a comedy option, but I can't deal with that level of role. Uh, Fiero? See, uh, if, we're Fieros, if we're going American. I was going to say, if you're going American, yeah, Fiero, I guess. But are DeLorean? they particularly unreliable? I think DeLorean's too rare. I'm thinking like... You'd, a, you'd a feel bad. You'd I'd, feel uh, bad. Yeah, I'd feel, I'd feel um, bad with anything like something that. Something with a Rover K series. MGF. Elise? 
I feel like the Elise has been... A bit too, it's a bit too at home on the race circuit. Yeah. Okay. The Elise is a bit too MGF. at home. The, M- MGF. the MGF, yeah, maybe. we've already got the, the JLR angle with the cheap yeah. B12. But if we put an what MGF else? in instead of the Jag, we could always go with like a, a big bargy BMW V12. Mm. Maximum complexity, maximum failure. Mm. What else is like... A late 90s Audi. See, I've had a late 90s Audi and it was bob on. And I don't know how I got lucky, but even my dad's got a decent, reliant Robin. <laughs> We're just going to barrel roll everybody else out of the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. External roll cage. Literally yes, just yeah. a hoop. Just, so just, just a hoop so you just go... Yeah. Vroom, 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 <laughs> and keep driving. Perfect. Ooh, yes. RX-8. Oh, yes. Yes, that's, that's the third one. Because you've got... Yeah, you've got terrible reliability, terrible yes. electrics, and then just fundamentally Apex seals. Yeah, fundamentally broken. Yeah, engineered system. Yeah, designed I think, to fail. I think of the. I think the RX8 is probably the That's top shout strong. That's for a three strong. harbingers of disaster. Mm-hmm. Or like uh, a nine nine six nine eleven that hasn't had its rear main seals or intermediate main seals looked at for the last 10 years or the um coolant pipe mods yes because the coolant pipe is their metal yeah. sections um and they're glued on yeah and or they go, how about how about the 4.2 liter v8 uh audi engine that and that hasn't had its uh, chain changed because that's another grenade engine you can get them cheap uh oh the uh, yes an audi s4 Yes, an yes. ADS four on on exactly sixty thousand miles. <laughs> yeah, I mean an ADS four would be good because you'd have a V eight rumbling around, which would just sound and glorious. It's quattro? Yeah, the Quattro. Yeah, um, yeah, that would be. But yeah, I mean that's that's a fun car to drive as long as you're as long as as long as when as long it goes, as, you can basically just as long just as it as long as turn it goes, the ignition off yeah, and just walk, walk away, away and just like, never think about it again. Yeah, where it lands, there it will be buried. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. That's a pretty strong suggestion. With so the S, it's the S4 or the RX8 for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Now personally. I would go with the S4 because I've always wanted the 4.2 V8 and I owned a lot of Audis so I'm used to working on them and swearing at them. I mean, given the amount of engine works that you've done and the, the kind of the tools that you've got and everything like that, are you close to the point where you could actually do the change yourself? Because they are ridiculously cheap to buy at this point. Oh yeah, well, all you need to do is all you need to do is <laughs> take the engine out of the car. Yes. Because the engine, they are th- from what I remember, they're on the back. Yeah, so the, the issue is that at this point, if you go to any garage and ask them to do this to one of these cars, it will cost more than the car. It's a write-off. Yeah, yeah it's a write-off. If you so, want to destroy your wallet, the Q8 V12 TDI. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, funny story. Now, admittedly, I don't know about this for the Q8, but I imagine it is exactly the same problem because it's basically the same car and the same kind of deal. The Touareg mm-hmm. V10 TDI, when the chains need doing on that, it's eight grand because it's 40 hours to take the engine out and 40 hours to put it back in from what I've been told, which is horrendous. Um, or it might have been 40 hours to put the engine in and out. So there's 20 hours out, 20 hours in, plus doing the chains, which actually comparatively isn't that long from what I'm told. Uh, And if the turbos need doing, it's 10 grand because it's exactly the same (coughs) problem. So, you know, if you're paying for the lady, you might as well do the chains and the turbos all in one and just bleed your wallet dry as hard as humanly possible. Are you actually looking auto trader now? Seven and a half. Seven and a half is the cheapest one. Four point two. This is the thing. People have done enough miles that they're fixing them and they're starting to creep back up in value because everybody's done the job on them. Yeah, so this one is 95,000 yeah. miles. The RSs are always going to be yes. rich because it's an RS. So the RS is the same engine but turboed, right? Yes. So same problem but worse? Well, same, prob- same so problem. Exactly the same problem. Same problem. But the car is worth more because it's an RS. And these, therefore it's worth There was a time, I think, when these were down to about five grand because yeah. everybody knew everybody knew that they were... 
I've seen an S4 for that wasn't broken, but evidently needed a lot of work, and it was less than four grand. In fact, I think mm. it was even. T I think the cheapest one I ever saw was two and a half grand, and I went. <sighs> yeah. I put my wallet to one side. Yeah. I remember you got terribly close to buying a uh, an M5 at one point. Oh, so about close. like yes. was it a couple of years ago? Uh, 2017, and I regret it. Still, it was because it was twelve they, grand, wasn't no, it? No, it was eight. It was eight, it was well sorted, it yeah. was exactly the right year to, to not pay through the nose on road tax and all of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the... Uh, it, um, was, it was not the right time. Oh, no, it was exactly the right time, because they just about jumped 100% in value. Well, yeah, but... Oh, God. We should have bought the 944 that we saw. We should have bought the 944 for a grand <laughs> instead, of, ten years instead of the amount that I did pay for the 944 <laughs> and then sold it for like 5p more. Uh, oh, dear. What? Ooh, that's an older one. That's a 2004. The same same deal, though, isn't it? Because uh, he's got the older grill. Must that's... Be. What? That is claiming to be a 2004 but with that grill. With that grill. Oh, that's the end of the B5s. Yeah, so it must be a really, really late model B5, basically. No, the B... Uh, the... No, sorry. Well, there you no, go, B6. 4 V2. No, that is a B... Is that like a really the early model B6? I don't know. Anyway, we're, we're getting sucked into just looking at Auto Trader at this point. This was supposed to be about race cars. And yes. Before it was supposed to be about race cars, it was supposed to be about the A3. Before it was supposed to be about the A3... We were talking about. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. The the other one. I'm. Th I, yeah, the B7 is the first one with the big scoopy grill. Yes. Um, but that was the C6 and the B7. The C6 was the A6 version, which was the first one that had the big scoopy grill. Okay. Which was my first one. My first A6. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the B. The B6 Four, was the five. first one to come in with the 4.2 V8. Right. Okay. Which is the 2004. So that's from 2000 onwards was the B6. Yeah. Yeah, I must admit, I do prefer the B6 styling over the B7. Yeah. A lot. I prefer the, the thinner grill rather than the big, scoopy grill on yeah. the front. Despite that, I own, I've own i owned two Audis with, which have the big, scoopy grill on the front. So, yeah. you know, at least when I'm in it, I don't have to look at it. <laughs> this is true. Um, but yeah, so I was I, trying to track backwards through things. Yes. So we've we've ended up just staring at Auto Trader as uh, because I think it's probably just because it's getting close to midnight. Uh, it's close to and midnight. It's, it's 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 the Auto Trader witching hour. Yes, it is. Of like yeah yeah that is that is very true. Um, so before we were talking about that, we were talking about race series. Before we were talking about race series, is I forget. And oh, then we were talking about the A3. And yes. before that, we were talking about. Um, we uh, so started. We were all saying, um, Phil, that's not. Uh, Phil from Car Throttle, or was it, oh no, because Matey's MX5 on Car Throttle was called Phil. Yeah, ignore me. Sorry, carry on. <coughs> no, I, was just, I was just trying to re recall all the things that we've talked about this evening. It's it's been through a lot. Well, we yeah we started on the Aston. Yeah, we did. Uh, we looked at Auto Trader, <laughs> um, yes. and then Several we got times. onto the A3. Yeah. Um, the roll cage. Yeah. Uh, the City Car Cup. Yes. More generally, just... More generally, just race racing. cars and how we should totally have mm -hmm. a... Um, a few digressions about... A pedal box race one car. 1.8 to turbo engines. Yes. Um, clutches. I'm staying up late now because I want to watch the full Spa 24. Ah, smart man. Mm. So we're here just like bringing you into into your... So we should talk about Spa. Frame. We should probably talk about Spa. I so must... let's, let's finish out with talking about Spa. Yeah. Because that's a really good good place to leave it. Probably. It is. If, if we are setting up for Spa. Legitimately a terrifying thing to a drive. Place, a place that we cannot go right now. Even if we wanted to, uh, we can't, I think. Can we? It's in France, isn't it? Belgium. You can. You just, have to, qu you just have to quarantine on the way back. That's oh, yeah, because you'd have to go through France to get to it, basically. Yes. Yeah, okay. If you fly in... So Pissenheads, Pissenheads is doing a... Um, Pissenheads is doing a... like. Oh, yeah, remote... and fitting the F1 car in the studio. Oh yeah, we did that as well, didn't we? Yeah. Tape measure. Yeah. Um, no, Piston Heads is doing a remote. That is, it's in a field somewhere. They're just getting everybody together to nice. watch watch on big screens and nice. camp the that's way good. they would have done at yes. Spa. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's quite good. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Um, 
I've not. I, I've been around Spa quite a few times. Um, I'm nearly I'm this close to going out in Spa in an Enzo. Mm -hmm. But you didn't have the right helmet. No, it was in the boot of the M3, yeah, and the M3 told me, had just me gone out on track, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I missed it by minutes. Which is really, really annoying. We also talked about the CG lock. Oh yeah, and the CG lock. We had yeah. we had a kind of <coughs> we had a sales section for a yes. product that is no longer for sale. Yes, yeah, unlucky. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I got to drive on the lunch break between the morning and afternoon sessions. I took the, I took my mate's M3 around uh, Spa, and we were only allowed to do sixty miles an hour. Which, hmm. do you know what? When you're coming up to Eau Rouge. And you get right down into the bottom at sixty mm -hmm. miles an hour. You spend a long time just with tarmac in the wheel. Like when you're coming through fast, you come back up and out to the crest mm. quite quickly because you're like going through Foxwood. quickly. Yeah, mm. but you go down through Rouge and you're coming downhill at speed, and you come up the other side. And it's just a wall of tarmac. It yeah, is really disconcerting. The first. So time it looks you do like it. you're driving into a brick wall. Yeah. Tarmac. Basically that, you're just mm. going down going, I have no idea how, where the other end of this is going. I just, because depending on where you where you are in the car, if you're in a you bucket team, you you're kind of lower down. down. You can't see, you can't high, see enough. high enough past the windscreen mm. to get through. You know, if you've got a big mm. sunstrip across as well, good luck. Yeah. Oh, someone's crashed on the crest. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> you're not as good as a proper racing driver and therefore you're going to hit them. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's wild. There were some incredible machines there when we did that. There was the most interesting one, actually, no. There was uh, there were many interesting ones. Uh, there was a bunch of McLaren 722s, which were being tested for an upcoming um, race series, and they were doing wet and dry testing, because it happened to rain and cross part of it, so they did wet and dry testing, which was good fun. Uh, but they sounded phenomenal. However, the most amazing thing that I saw there, and I've never seen it since, and I doubt I will ever see another one, certainly driving, was a Ferrari 288 GTO Evolution, hmm. which Ferrari decided in their infinite wisdom they were going to go into Group B Rally. So they decided to take their 288 GTO flagship and make it four-wheel drive, twin turbo, wind the boost up, and then go rallying through forests. So it is low, <laughs> slope-nosed, just insane and they cancelled group b before they could get it into racing uh and this guy who was there had one among half a dozen other cars that he had uh, and he was racing it and he was spanking it as hard as it would go and at the time it was the only one running in the world there were two or three chassis uh and he had he had the only one that had an engine in at the time and he was beating it mercilessly around the track and it sounded amazing and it was just, I would love to meet the guy again and see the car because it's so good. Um, and I would have loved to have seen that Ferrari going through a forest at hmm. like a ton 60, ton 70 because just drifting. Yeah, that would have been phenomenal. Um, but yeah, th I mean, they took that car and they decided, oh, we've, we've, you know, it's been disbanded, we should probably do something else with it, etc. Hmm. etc. So they turned the boost down like sensible people. And they made the styling a little bit less aggressive, and they made the Ferrari F40 out of it. Mm. A well-known, tame car. <laughs> yeah, just incredible. Uh, You're running out yes, of words. Sorry, yeah, no, uh, yeah, sorry, I was just reading it. Uh, isn't the F40 the Group B... Yes, basically, yeah. So the, the Ferrari F40 was, as I say, was developed from the... Um, so I'm just catching up on chat. Uh, it was mm. developed from the Evolution. The Evolution was developed from the 288 GTO in order to go rallying. And then they turned it into a race car instead. So, yeah, it was absolutely... Pretty good pedigree. Nuts. Pretty good And pedigree. I loved everything about it. <laughs> what a phenomenal... I'll have to try and dig out a picture of it, actually. I'm sure I've got some somewhere. But, yeah. Well, we are about to clock up. On yeah. to midnight, three and a yes. half hours, so yes, proof we can make it longer. Yeah, of course we can. <laughs> <laughs> we, it's what, you know. Absolutely, it's what everybody needed was an extra half hour long uh, dive down into something with misc afterwards. So yes. uh, we should probably start the wrap up, which will take us to about half past midnight. It should be Good. flawless. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm up at six tomorrow, it's fine, don't Oof. worry. 
I'm not. I was just going to say, at least it's the weekend tomorrow. But... Yes, exactly. That was why I said let's do this on Friday, not Thursday. Yeah, fair point. Uh, yeah, so thanks mm -hmm. everybody for joining us. We've actually maintained 10 watches all the way to the end, which is probably our That's best. Impressive. It's our best strong finish throughout, As throughout I say, the whole there thing. Is a, there is a common factor. And yeah, yeah. and uh, and really weird that chat's been nice and active. We've had yep. a good bunch of people in. It's been really good. Uh, but you haven't managed to sell anything. Put... No, to be fair, you have last... given some stuff away. Yes, I remember you yes, have promised. I, yes, can yeah, you promised a mug. Can you, can you make a note that I said no to mug? Um, yes. So speaking of, if you haven't already, because it's obviously raining again, and therefore you need wet weather clothing. Beanies. We've also got hats, although I still need to order another one. Um, and t-shirts, which I'm not wearing, and they're still all boxed up next to me because I'm not a smart man and didn't prepare. Yep. But it doesn't matter. You know where they are. They are at shop.pedalbox.show, and you can buy any of that, and we can get that shipped out to you as soon as the order comes in because we have stock, finally. And if you want to support us directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and you can subscribe from as little as a dollar a month our five and ten dollar patrons get access to our discard or if you want to see adrian go racing <laughs> yes then yeah. five thousand dollars a <laughs> yes. month for the next year we'll yes. probably if do you, it. if you would like to support getting this project done so we can start the race team you can do any of these things yeah. and you we can get pour some... money in yeah, and entertainment, entertainment comes and out. Yeah, entertainment comes out the other yes. end and it will be golden. And to be fair, there are a few things that we're trying to start, start up at the moment on Pedalbox. One of them is a series looking at various other people's cars, one of which is hopefully going to be Nick's literal race car in a driveway. Uh, and there's a few other hilarious cars that mm -hmm. I really want to... Um, I really want to go over. There's things I'd love to get back in touch with uh, Nige with the Pender Wagon because the Pender Wagon is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, another friend who I've been out to the Nurburgring a few times with has got a really well sorted Mark One, uh, Mark mm -hmm. One Golf. Uh, it did an eight fifty nine ten years ago with me as a passenger, and he's improved it since. It's ludicrous. So I really want to see that again and yeah. a bunch of other stuff. So we want to get up to decimal tenths and have a look at the Frog properly as well. Mm -hmm. But I need to build a few things for the car to, to try and video that properly, which will make it even better. Uh, so yeah, there are definitely things good to things come. coming. And I suppose if we had like a race team, we should probably have a series dedicated to the trials and tribulations of a race team. Yeah. Might need to hire an editor. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> oh well. And in the so, meantime, you yeah. and I will probably continue to talk shit about yeah. random like car configurators and other rubbish. Yeah. Roll on, what, a couple of months' time? Well, we we need the uh, well, no, G, we need the GR eighty six configurator mm -hmm. to go live, and then we can do so. That. As soon as the GR eighty six goes live, we'll be going through one of those for shiggles because that will be really interesting yep. to look through. Um, if I, I reckon their configurator will probably be poor though, because again, it's not a car. The GT eighty six had next to no options. Yeah. So we can always. I mean, so, I'm, I'm interested to look at it, and I think it'd be interesting to talk about the GT86, the yeah. GR86, and why everybody should be driving one because it's one of the best sports cars available today. We can, but we can touch on that. We can go through maybe the Supra configurator next month. Again, there's not much of interest in that. I've already looked. And it's, it's fairly like it's what it it's, is. The, really. the, if you want, if you want a configurator, you mm. need to go to Porsche because Porsche will charge you for the air uh. inside the wheels. Obviously. Unless you'd like nitrogen, sir. That would be an extra 200, 200 pounds. Yes. And I don't want the air. Okay, well, we're going to charge you to take it away. Yes. And yes. then charge because you Because that's again. lightning. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, that's a very good point. As Amy says, the GR Yaris. Oh, yes. We should do... But again, the, the configuration just confits, consists of one of two packs. That's it. Oh. It's either the track pack or the uh, touring pack, I think. Mm. And that's pretty much it. And yeah, yeah, you 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 just roll literally. You just roll the dice because you're going to be delighted either way. Yeah. Because again, yeah, it's an amazing car. Well, we'll pick something else to roll. If yeah. you have suggestions, uh, comment them on the yep. video because obviously chat will just kind of leave through. And yes, the Supra is the BMW in a cheap frock. But I was thinking trying to wing it into the GR86 coming soon and having mm. a Toyota and talking about. Maybe Toyota, we could look. So. Maybe we could look at all of the Toyotas. You could do GR86 yeah. Supra. 
uh, God, isn't it great that Toyota have actually got a fleet, like, they've got a sports they've cars come back again. F- yeah. They really need an MR2 replacement, but apart from that, they're uh, doing yeah. well. As Wingron says, Ferrari has fewer overall options, but more absurd ones. <laughs> I, I am aware of, well, there's a friend of mine who ordered a brand new Ferrari, and they didn't necessarily get it exactly right. Um, they missed one option and they were beside themselves having not it was it was a no cost option so he would not lost anything but it's forever just not quite exactly the car that he specced and I, th- I think what that did would, he miss uh, yellow tack what does that mean as in the tack has a yellow background instead of black oh so it's in your face all the time oh, that it no. never happened and apparently they said we can we can look into you know we'll get it fixed for you we'll get it fixed it's absolutely fine and to fix the yellow tack they would have had to ship the car back to ferrari because the whole dash has to come out the whole thing has to be redone uh and yeah (laughs) so this is just like oh my god and they they didn't compensate him monetarily. However, as I understand, he did well out of their guilt. Uh, yeah. This I mean, was like his third Ferrari with them, and he bought other things from them as well, like one after another, not a, a fleet of, but just had a car, and then sold him, had a car, and hopped through. So, yeah. As, as Wibble Wobble says, uh, configure a Lamborghini. They get very silly very quickly, which could be good fun. Mm, yeah, okay. We have got Lamborghini Pangborn just down the road. <laughs> you just go in and do it. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will see you next week when Chris should be back, and we'll do mm-hmm. another of our usual kind of run-throughs of things, maybe some CAD <coughs> and some updates on the cars. In the meantime, check out some of the other videos, subscribe to the channel, buy some merch, and have a look on Patreon. I am trying to work out some more stuff to put on the Patreon upper tiers. I just haven't worked it out yet. Mm. need to be more creative and have more time. But until that happens, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Enjoy spa. (laughs) Yeah.